want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Audrey, are you retarded? It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? Uh, no, I'm not retarded. Because a retarded person can make a cup of coffee. Am I right, Tom? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't really know much about the limitations of the handicap. I know in an employment agency that hires out retarded people for $4 an hour. So, <laughs> if making a cup of coffee is too difficult a task for you, Miss Bennett, perhaps you'd be good enough to let me know. And I'll contact this agency and give a retarded person a job. Joe. <laughs> I wasn't too rough on her, was I? Well, she is new and all. <laughs> <laughs> kind of worth it, right? <laughs> yes, it was. There you go. Not oversold oh, in the least. Oh, man. From yesterday, as requested by yesterday. By me, as requested by me yesterday. Yes. From some <laughs> bad Ashton uh, Kutcher movie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in, in any movie, it just proves you can take anything out of any film mm -hmm. and make it special. Something good in all of them. Something wrong with the coffee? Yeah, no. Uh, no. no. It's fine. Why'd you make a face? But I can't play it all the way from the beginning. Thank oh. you very much. Thank God I do. Li thank God I now do pre-listen to things. Yeah. Right. You got it. Thank you, Beth Ann. Better. Okay. okay. Beth, Ann, uh, Beth Ann originally had uh, dubbed off a version that had a a very naughty word in it. Oh no! Sure. And before the show, I was uh, in here with Rob, and I said, "Hey, I want you to hear this tape Beth Ann got from that movie." And this f bomb came right away. Flowing right through this coffee tastes like. Let's Perhaps you'd like this to listen to in the car. <laughs> <laughs> On yeah. your own time. Oh, I'd called Sweet Beth Ann. <laughs> Sweet Beth McBride. Beth Ann McBride. And I said, Baby, baby, mm -hmm. baby, honey, darling, cupcake. You're killing me by giving me a tape to play on the yeah. air. There's has, a nasty in it. Has the the bad word in it. Oh, killing sure. me. Dangerous. You're killing me. We always walk through the mind. Bob, now he didn't have to write the word all those times on the on the on the CD. <laughs> I don't want you to play the wrong. Okay. Yeah. Here's From here it is. Here it is. Prevention. Edited for you. Sanitized for your protection. Very good. Something wrong with the coffee? Ah, uh, no. It's fine. Why'd you make a face? But um, well, it's it's, it's a little bitter, but. Jesus. Audrey, get in here. Sir, really. It's, it's, uh, I, and here comes Molly Shannon. Better than this. Sir. Is right. something wrong? Taste Tom's coffee. No, really, it's okay. <laughs> How would you rate that? Oh, it's not that great. Not that great. I guess so. But Tom thinks it tastes like... <laughs> Audrey, are you retarded? Okay, you heard the It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? No, I'm not retarded. Because a retarded person can make a cup of coffee. Am I right, Tom? Funny. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't really know much about the limitations of the handicap. I know in an employment agency that hires out retarded people for Joe. $4 dollars an hour. Joe, Joe, so, Joe, Joe. If Joe. making a cup of coffee Joe. is too difficult to Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe. Perhaps you'd be good enough to let me know. Joe. Now, I'll contact this agency and give Joe. a retarded person a job. <laughs> Okay. I wasn't too rough on her, was I? No. Well, no. no, not at all. She is new and all. Wow. Anyway, there it is. What a start. Nice. All right, thanks. What a start. Try not to uh, throw the S bomb at us too many times. Please, um, uh, if you did that. Hello. Uh, hello there, hey, Mr. Hey. Shannon. <laughs> I found that last piece to be something of an offensive nature on behalf of everybody at the Z Morning Zoo. I humbly apologize. Yes, right now I must tell you that Jethro Bodine is completely offended by that last segment. <laughs> We're not all about that. No, not at all. <laughs> Stay tuned for the top five at nine with Special Ed. Oh, Mr. Shannon, that's a DJ named Special Ed. <laughs> yes, uh, Mill. Would you have uh, some groaners? I only have one completely lame groaner for you today on the flame throwing Z1809527.8. Well, looking forward to it, Mr. Shannon. What do you call a sitcom in which Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie hang out with three guys named Raj, Raj, excuse me, Raj, Raj, Raj. 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 What do you call a sitcom in which Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie hang out with three guys named Raj, Rerun, and Dwayne?
What do you call it? What's happening? Sorry. Hey now. Hey now. There was only one on the sheet today. Huh. Only one completely lame grown up. Oh, of course. Okay, thank you. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Darn. The door is hugely symbolic now. Yes, it is. I mean, everybody already kind of knows that we're here anyway, but we even talk before the door opens. It's not a true story. He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of hate. And his soul won apart. Your discretion advised. I don't want to overthink it, but I can't see the screen door. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Yes. and Mrs. Human Monster and all the ships at sea. Yeah, I forgot that. Just remember, it's good looking somewhere. The <laughs> Don Geronimo air black. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Thank you, Robbie, and uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Hi there, Don and Mike Show. A new episode on this Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, 08, oh, 03, oh, 04. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Howdy, Buzz. Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello, friends. Friends. Uh, Don and Mike's new episode on, uh, it's August 3rd, 2004. No. Yes, it is. It's right. Tuesday. Call us from anywhere in America, 877-365-3636. From Canada, 800-636-1067. Washington, D.C. on WJFK-FM. Call 202-432-1067. Those are your phone numbers. So, here we are. Uh -huh. um, not retarded. Not retarded now. We'll be retarded soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Cindy Lauper will be calling us soon. Yay. We're filling time right now until Cindy Lauper calls. Oh, she's calling at the front of the show yes. today. And it's just, she's just calling to say hello. Well, she just okay. wants to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> she just wants to have fun like all girls do. <laughs> yes. Girls <laughs> just want to have fun. I didn't, know, I didn't know that you were a fan of Cindy Law. Oh, fantastic. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy all her music. <laughs> really? Do you like She Bop? Ah, uh, She Bop, fantastic. She Bop, Baloo Bop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I enjoyed most of Cindy Lauper's performances. I especially loved her when she had the multicolored hair. No, you're blur <laughs> you're blurring the line again uh -huh. that Mr. Drysdale pretty much is only here at the beginning of the show. I'm but sorry, that's, that's right. okay, that's fine. Should be J dubs at this part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, listen, first uh, on a serious note, get well to uh, Mike Patrick from ESPN. Yes, uh, bypass surgery, I oh, believe. Wow. Right. He's a he's a, a real friend of, of our show. Oh, he's a good guy. He's a best in the business as far as play-by-play. -play. He's real good. Uh, and he's going to be replaced, at least in the preseason, on ESPN by Pat Summerall, which I find mm -hmm. funny uh, in so many ways because Pat Summerall is so feeded out. Right. He is so so we hope we have. We still have the Pat Summerall Magic Eight Ball. Oh, it's gotta be the Eight Ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's got to be the Eight Ball. Pat Summerall. <laughs> Gotta get the music. For I don't. You know where we are now. That's one of your contemporaries, Mr. Drysdale. Yeah, Pat Summerall here. <laughs> yes, I like Pat Summerall. Shake it, drink oh, Pat. Pat. <laughs> what does the ball say? Yeah, I don't remember. Neither do I. <laughs> that's good. Yes, that's good. A question, Mr. Drysdale. Absolutely. The question would be: Will, will you have a stroke? During the first ESPN telecast? I mean, that was bad news, the fact that you did something like that the night before the game. He's not answering the question. <laughs> or he might have a stroke the night before the game. Yeah, I don't know, but we wish him a bone speed. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> so get well soon, Mike Patrick. Yes, of course. <laughs> I don't. I have to snap myself out of this. Yeah. Last night. That's it. I mean, I'll just plow through. You can keep being whoever you want to be. That's you know, great. sometimes I just slide into this character and find absolutely no reason to get out of it. <laughs> you may remember towards the end of the show yesterday yes. when my wife called in. <laughs> Your lovely wife, Frida. <laughs> yes, we'd like to see her down at the Commerce Bank. Of Beverly Hills. Of Beverly Hills. <laughs> 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 oh, <Beverly Hills. laughs> <laughs> well, Frida, I'd love to open a brand new account. Right here at the Commerce Bank with your name on it. Hold on, I bet this is Cindy Lauper. Oh. You want to talk to her, Mill? Uh, no, I think I'll use my own voice. Hey! Oh, don't stop it now. Don't stop now doing the uh, Milder and Drysdale voice? Cindy? <laughs> hey, Cindy? Is this the fabulous Cindy Lauper? <laughs> yeah, who is this? Is Cindy? this Dawn and Mike? Yes, it is. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Hi how are you? Oh, what do you got, Rob? You, oh, you got one of her records? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Oh, come on. 
stop that. You we got the her. new single, darling? I don't know if we have the new yeah, single. Yeah, you do. Did Walk somebody get by. it? It's off of the live DVD. Mm. I've been making records. Can you play one, please? All right, we, no, we, 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 the least You're we can do. You're making me cry. I feel I like be... you haven't bought a record in 25 would... years. Darling, I would, really love, I would love to. Beth Ann, where is Cindy Lauper's new record? Do we have her new record? Uh, Beth Ann, here's our producer, Beth Ann McBride. I know. Beth Ann? Hi, yeah. Beth Ann. Beth we... Ann, did you get the record they sent you to play? It hasn't come in the mail yet. Oh, oh, hey. oh now that oh. is a... Shall I sing it for you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing your yeah, new it's song. It's a Burt Backrack song, and it's oh. from the album at last. Okay. And okay. we do a live version off of the live DVD, which you can get at Virgin, a Tower, or any of the <laughs> All right, cool. buddy. Including Borders. And, uh, Cindy Lauper is allowed to do the plugs up front, ladies right. and gentlemen. Yeah. Goddamn right. Okay. Anyway, it's a fun show. It's not an 80s show, so if you're coming just for the classics, we don't do that. I do old and new, and some stuff that's unrecorded. And there are some things because it's live, depending upon the audience, that change all the time. Now, when you say at last, are you talking about the old classic at last? It's nice that you're really current. Um, yeah. <laughs> you pigeonholed Mike. At last. Is that it? Uh, yeah, but it's uh, you know uh, it 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 is. But I I do my own version. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. Probably for the best. I, I know I've done the record with uh, Russ Teitelman and William Whitman, who recorded the She's So Unusual album and right. mixed it, and was also the associate producer. Yeah. And he also worked on Shine with me. We've done. Uh, this is the same band that I was out with Cher with. And um, the band is really a wonderful band, and it's kind of very energetic show because for those who have oh, hold on hold on one second what, what was that pat yeah, i don't remember i'm sorry excuse me i'm sorry cindy it was a guy no that's okay all right so um yes. for the people who um have the cd it, she's just really heavy into the cell right now and i'm not really sure how to ease her out i know it's evening tough to get a word in there the orchestra i love her i'm a huge Rock fan I mean, it's a rock and roll show. Uh, you are uh, you are one hard working woman. Well, you, I do you, what I want. You work always, though. You seem to always be out there working. Because this is what I want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. How you old know, are you? Just like you, you how, uh, you've been in radio for how long? Uh, over Hundred years. You've been over almost thirty years. Uh, I've been twenty five years. Cindy, how old are you? Can I? You're a lifer. Mm -hmm. How old? Are, how old are you? How old are you? I'm I'm forty six, and I'm forty five. Okay. I, I'm not trying to uh, put you on the spot or make no, you defensive. No, no, I feel that it's a sexist thing that they like to tag on women because they want to look aye, at aye, aye. and kick the tires and see how much money. No, goodness, no, no. For goodness sake. No, that. it's not a sexist thing. No? It, especially when we give you our ages right up front, you know? Jesus. So you're, I'm, I'm 51. You're 51. Okay. Then please step back and get ready for a compliment. <laughs> You look. Gr I would never have guessed no. that you're 51. No, I'm, and I'm serious, very serious when I say that blows me away mm -hmm. because I've seen you recently. I've seen video of you uh, of you recently, and I, I mean, I'm, I mean, really, I'm surprised at that. I only ask how old you are because I remember. Now back is that sexist, Cindy? By me we, saying that? You know why? Let me let me explain. We are so conditioned. This is what I look like. And we're so conditioned that at, at this age, you're supposed to be this, and this age, you're supposed to be that, and oh, yeah, then you're yeah, supposed yeah. to do this, and then you're supposed to do that. I, just I think, to... personally, it's a crock. My grandmother lived till she was 99, mm -hmm. and I pretty much pretty functional till she fell in her... When do you think she's going to be on trading spouses? <laughs> I, you know, I think staying healthy... I don't want to tell Cindy Lauper to get bent, bent. no. I mean, I guess I was never young when you first saw me either. No, My that, first hit was at 30, 31. That, and cool. see, there you go. That was going to be where I was going with this. I was going to say, how old are you now? How old you were when you had your first success? Because I was playing records back then. I remember when the program director, Buzz, you remember Buddy? Buddy yeah, absolutely. Buddy, a, a hit record would have to come up and bite him on his gigantic ass for him to even acknowledge its presence. Plan. And he came in, and he was the last guy in the world to add a record. This was in Chicago, and he came in. With your record, and it changed uh, the radio station at the yeah. time because we'd we never played anything except whatever the garbage was that was being put out by the companies that corporate rock and roll stuff. Mm -hmm. well, I really fought hard not to do corporate music, whatever. Bravo to you, sir. Well, this is my whole life. I just feel, and I still feel very strongly that whatever you do, you don't. I want to contribute. I want to contribute to to music, and. You know, if you have a hit song, 
it's great, but you want a hit song that does something, that means something, that has like a part of you, that it's humanity. All right, let me ask you. All right, Mm -hmm. we're very, we're being very, very serious on what is, uh, you know, really in our in our house here is a very goofy show. Do you? No, have a, I know. I can. Do you tell. have a goofy you side? Heads, I know. Do you have a goofy <laughs> side, Cindy? Do you have no, a goofy side? Right. Do, of course she no, does. No, not me. No, I, that, but does. I mean, I, she's so unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course yes, she indeed. Would you sing part of your new song for us? No. You but won't. I think you should have it. Well, well you, you think know, so too. Right. No, you were serviced it. I, now, now, hold on. That would be calling our producer a liar, and we're not going to do that. She, no, I believe you were serviced it. Everyone was serviced oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it. What, what kind of station are you? Are you at Hot AC? Talk. No, we're talk. Talk. You talk radio, oh, that's why you don't have it. Yeah. And that's maybe why we're a little goofier than you might be accustomed to. No, yeah, that's, that's okay. why you started on with an argumentative tone. That's okay. What? Well, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, Cindy, wait, now, hold Cindy, on. Hold on. You have no bigger fan in this room than me, the lead voice. No, what was, I know. What, was argu- what would you expect what was if I took something you did 25 years ago? And I, said, and I made believe that you're still from Chicago and you have done nothing since then. Uh, listen, if I had, if I had been blessed to have a hit record as big as <laughs> girls just want to have fun. You were blessed with your speaking voice and your brain. Yeah, <laughs> Get out of here. You're crazy. Let me just go see her. She's very talented. Trust me. I am a big Listen, fan of hers. David, I don't know what's going what on about with her. You two? What about you two? Are you going to come? Uh, actually, are you ready for a, a surprise? No, I won't be there, but my son will tonight. And that's not a comp ticket, honey. He bought those out with his own money to see you tonight. So listen, well, when when I get off of, you know, because in case it is live, I don't want to have his name on the air, but give me his name and I'll get him back. Oh, oh that is very no, that's, sweet. That's, that's very nice. That would be very nice. That would be wonderful. And then but I, what about you? Uh, I've got a... I've got a I'm sorry, did I put you on the spot? Hey, who's being argumentative here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, which one are you? Are you Mike? I'm, I, uh, I was the one that said who's being argumentative here. I'm Mike. And I'm the one with the, the 19-year-old that's going to see you You're tonight. Don. I'm Don. So what are yeah. you doing, Mike? I'm uh, going to uh, a restaurant. No, I'm going to a restaurant tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. Look around. Cafe. I'm going. To, I'm going to my restaurant tonight. <laughs> oh, you have. You have a restaurant. Is this yeah. a plug? Are we? Uh, yeah. oh, now he's turned this around. Uh, yeah. Yo, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, you're more than welcome to come out after the show too. You know, we'd love to have you. When is it? What? What's your restaurant? It's a little Irish God. pub. Don't oh, ask. Oh, you have them. the Irish pub. Yes, yeah. yeah. a little that's Irish that's pub. The Irish pub. <laughs> It's where is it? Don doesn't like me to plug it on the air. So well, where is it? Look around, Cafe. Uh, where, are you, you're at uh, Nissan tonight? Wolf Trap. Oh, Wolf Trap. <laughs> now, now you're flowing with Nissan. the plug. what the hell is that? No, she, she's at Wolf Trap. At Wolf tonight. Trap. Oh, it's a... It's really beautiful here. It's yeah. a 30-minute thir- 30 30 drive. 30-minute drive. It's so pretty. 30-minute drive from where? From, from where you are. the restaurant. Yes. From your restaurant to Mike's DJ restaurant. <laughs> I mean, from, <laughs> from your locale to Mike's DJ restaurant. But enough about me. This is about you. It's a half an hour. Um, um, well, all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but please see Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Uh, I, I am truly a fan of yours, and and. But you're not coming. No. See, uh, see, so you're you're lost. It's a great show, and Taylor Dane is going to um. Oh my God. For me, and uh, Taylor well, Dane's opening for you. Not op- she she's a special guest. We uh. Oh, we, she's going to be there. We we. Well, then <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Honey, and I'm, and Taylor <laughs> Dane is rock. there. And then in the end, I bring her on to my stage. You know, we have a history with Taylor Dane, and, and, uh, you know, you two. Is it sorted? It's sorted. No, it's not sorted. It's all good when she used to carry a dog around in her handbag. Yes, I remember It's all very good. Wow. I'm Taylor Dane. That's right. Here's my dog. You both have that New York background. I don't know. Is she from Jersey? Maybe she is Jersey, Maybe. the metro area, probably. It's in the tri-state area, darling. The Troy state area. She sounds like you a little bit when she talks. <laughs> you you know that if you've known Taylor Dane for a while. You oh, know she just, sounds the no, same way. She does. I think she's great. She's Taylor so, Dane. Uh, talking so, to Cindy Lauper. Mm-hmm. I, always, I always loved her. she got a lot of... Um, Chutzpah. Yeah. So do you, baby. Yeah, you got it. Oh, yeah, I'll poke you in the eye. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I wasn't too. afraid right. of those wrestlers. I'm not afraid of them. <laughs> I'll poke you in the eye. I like that. All right, I'll let you poke me in the eye. I like you. I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. So don't, don't get don't get on my case. We're here, we're here promoting your show. Well, which one are you, Mike? I'm Don. I'm Don. I'm, I'm the defensive one. 
<laughs> for God's sakes. Go see Cindy Lauper yeah. tonight. And I'm Mike. I'm a whore. At Wolf Trap. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Also, if you're listening to us in Buffalo uh, on the 8th, she'll be in Buffalo at the Center of the Arts in Ontario, the 27th, 28th at the Casino Rama. Wait a minute. What are you? you, you oh, yes. Welcome know. to my world, darling. We're syndicated. Oh. And, uh, so Bal you're on right now in Buffalo, too? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And, all, and, and they've all heard On an out. FM flamethrower in Buffalo, WBUF. And they're all terribly offended that you took that tone with us at the beginning of this conversation. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. <laughs> Phones are blazing right it's now. It's a what? rock show. We're rockers. What do you think? <laughs> That's what do you think of, like, some passive... Um, um, hold know. on. Let me do your plugs here. Uh, it's August 31st, Milwaukee, at the... Potawatomi Casino? Oh, God. I'm not sure. Yeah. Who, who's booking you these gigs? And then <laughs> it's uh, September 4th in Baltimore at the Pier 6 concert. Hey, Pavilion. Cindy, when you play uh, at a casino, you hit the tables? You do any gambling when you're playing there? No. I no. gamble with my... my um Career, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, you know, every time you, uh, you write a song or you, you know, you go for that feeling like, I think mm -hmm. this is really special i'm gonna you know do this and that's like gambling and you know the whole for me i, I don't but you know everybody you're so you're so funny you thought that this was like a hot ac show i I'm did i was see. like oh you dirty rat you see here's i don't even know if, 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 I, if people <laughs> listening <side> know <laughs> Hot AC is like... Don't uh, be a side swipe. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, watered down top 40. Yeah. Yeah. So bland as if not to be offensive to anybody no, at it's all. Not. No, it's not. Hot AC actually, um, in the language of many, is um, music that isn't hip-hop. I will tell you this, right. Cindy. Let, let me tell you this right now. Although I love hip-hop loops and I put them in everything, but it's it's... Basically, for everything that isn't hip hop, we could we could switch gears right now yeah. and communicate with you yeah. as if this was a hot AC station. I know Don's because capable of it. I'm capable of it. There, right? we, we, we could do it right now. I, I, can is, I ask you a question? Wait, wait. You yeah. guys are jocks, right? Yes. So, we're radio jocks. Well, you were, right? Yes. So we were no, and we were zookeepers. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we were. We were. Yeah, I know. I know. The morning zoo. Sure. You know. But my question is, what do you think of the new stations that are a chain of stations that are starting to open around the country, where they're letting the DJs choose their music. Who are these stations? They're yeah. new stations, new chains out in the West Coast. Though. Really? I, I ain't heard of that. I haven't heard of that. I mean, I've heard of Infinity. I've heard of Clear Channel. I've heard of Entercom. Entercom yeah. You know. Uh -huh. uh, you know and no, frankly, no, this is a new thing that's starting. Wow. I guess it's in um, rebuttal to what has been happening. I would I, listen. I'm for anything that gives DJs a, a little more control. I'm for anything new. No, but for those who wanna just like remember when we were kids, we would discover new things from certain DJs. I don't, you know, you would say, "Oh, I gotta listen to this guy because he's been playing this, this, and this, which is a scene." Oh, but maybe it's now. a different world now. It's well, way back world. in the day, I mean, back before all of our time, you, know, you only had a few choices. Back before all of our time, that was the way. I mean, the DJs yeah. had all the power. I mean, that's how you got records well, played. Oh, yeah, I guess power. I mean, I'm talking about way, way back in the you know the days. No, even oh, back yeah. in the '70s, at the beginning mm -hmm. of the '70s, there was only like you know, you lived by a big city. You heard one big radio station, right. maybe two, that played hit records. Right. You know, then you have maybe a, an alternative or a progressive station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we used to like stay up and put the the radio under my. I used to put the radio under my pillow. Yeah, but see, no, but no one feels like that about the radio now. The, the only, really, the only, the only type of radio people listen to is the type that we do. To be quite right? honest with you, I think that was good. We fought right away. That was very controversial. Yeah. <laughs> The industry is free falling around us, yet somehow we are we have a golden parachute. We are survivors. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, we are. As as are you, darling. Well, I'm a lifer. I didn't go into this because I was just looking to make a hit record. I went into this to take on music as a life as a vocation, as a career for you know, look, listen, Celia Cruz sang till she died. And Ella Fitzgerald I think when she couldn't sing anymore, that's when she gave up. But I think that her courage and her her singing and what she contributed to music was so extraordinary that why wouldn't you want to 
live your life that way and you know who I think is super kind of integrity. You know what's sad though about our culture, really? The thing that, that I remember most yeah, about Ella Ella Fitz, about Ella Fitzgerald, what I remember the most is I when she broke the glass. Remember oh, that commercial? Yeah, except that. You know who's she super? really didn't break the glass? No, yeah. she didn't break the glass. You know, maybe television. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, she she had a fantastic, incredible... You know who's so super talented? Who? Jessica Simpson. <laughs> well, Jessica, I mean, I worked with her. I saw her. She, <laughs> Come on. She's surprisingly good oh. on the take. On the... On the... Um, uh, on the in the rehearsals... She doesn't like certain actors that you work with. In rehearsal, they won't give. They don't do it. Mm. They just mm. kind of walk through it gently. And mm. then when the camera's on, as soon as the camera's on, it's a different story. Yeah, because, and you, you know, how is your acting? What are you doing with that? Um, well, I've been talking to Joe Montello, who is uh, a wonderful... Uh, who is that? Who is that? Oh, we're going through. Could you do different sizes? No. <laughs> wait, I'm confused now. What? No, 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 no. I'm on the phone live. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, and now, wait, now, excuse me. That was very rude. It was Hold the on. lettering. Oh, now wait. That is Hold a on. violation. Who's rude now? Oh my God! Oh, After my all that, God. we're oh, accused of being what, argumentative. What, 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 some kind of violation. No, what, what aren't you allowed to say? Wait, wait, wait. Now that we're. I mean, I, are, I'm in Vienna. Are there good cupcakes here? I mean, I throw you a globe-sized <laughs> softball. How's your okay. acting doing? And then, bingo, she's, ta she's talking to somebody else. Oh, I'm we gotta sorry. Spend... I know. You're right. Five I'm minutes. wrong. It was wrong of me. Very wrong. Five minutes talking about Ella Fitzgerald. And then all, uh, then like... and then all of a sudden, no, I don't like that lettering. Mm. Um, no, you know. Um... Well, have a cupcake. No, they don't make cupcakes here. And like an idiot, I was talking to somebody, some station, and I'm looking. At, it was really early, and I'm looking at it, talking mm -hmm. to Jessica Simpson. And I said, I said, Vienna, you got gondolas there? <laughs> like, oh, wow. You are all you, over the place. You cracked this not month? I'm not. Off and on. It's not Venice. It's Vienna, right. and it was you know, I'm digging this interview. Because yeah. it's in Virginia. I, I'm crazy. thinking this is this is an A-list guest that we should have on more often. So. Yes, Please. absolutely. I like so. the fact. That it's, I like I like it when we have somebody on the show where I'd say thirty percent of this in, interview I've been completely confused. Really? Yes. Not that's me? right. No, no, I think that's great. But you know what I think? Away? Perfect. Seriously, stuff. somebody comes up. If anybody ever walks up to me and says, "Hey, are you a tough guy?" I'm going to say, "I'll poke you in the eye." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And if you take that away from an interview, right, you've done how well. How many fingers? <laughs> 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 All right, no, Cindy. Wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you because you want to know. I went to talk to Joe Montello. And Don said, who's that? Who's I, that? I, I, I don't know who and that is. And that's when either. you started talking to one of your assistants right, about cupcakes. I said I was sorry and I was wrong. Is he mobbed up? Is he no, mobbed up? Joe Montello is a Tony winning, uh, a Tony award winning director okay. on Broadway. All right, super. He, um, he just did, um, he, he directed Wicked. Uh, he uh, oh, right. just did... Um, uh, Sondheim's uh, Assassin. Are you talking Broadway? So you're going to go to Broadway? You're going to do Broadway or what? Well, I started, you know, when I did this at last CD, it was all covers until I started to realize. You now, at first, I chose songs from the 50s and 60s thinking, well, my voice suits that. Mm -hmm. Because like I could have done a standard CD, and then I started looking at it. You know, I studied jazz under Lenny Tristano School, and I kind of felt like. I don't want to make a record that sounds old. You must mention all these names like Joe Montello and Lenny Tristano. You, you know, these sounds like guys that really ought to, you know, take their girlfriends out on Friday night. You know, these Maybe sounds. Because they're Italian. They are friends of ours. Yeah, they're All right, I think Italian is good. You know, because I'm Sicilian, so it's a mix of everything. There you go. You must sing for me now uh, your hit song "All Through the Night." Please, please, <laughs> please, audition. please, please, no. please, 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 it's a, it's a request, it's, it's a, a favor, I'm a fan, we don't play music on this show, this is the only way we get it, please, please, and we love music, just all through the night, and I like that, at oh, the end where, you sing with me too, well, no, I, I, you don't want me to sing with you, <laughs> the end where you do that real high, that, ah, <laughs> can you still do that, or are you enhanced now with uh, computers, oh no, it's live, so you, right. you it's live, can you hit all your notes, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, I, whatever I hear, I, I exercise. I do my exercises all the time. 
Are you like talking about like a, a and I do yoga vocal? because you have to keep yourself very strong. You're talking about vocal exercises. I do that too. I mean, do you have to have a treadmill or or, or vocal exercise? You're not. No, I do <laughs> yoga and weight. Sing me a song about cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> you just make up. Did a you song. ever? Did you ever listen to uh, Chibumato? Chibumato? Yeah. Is the, he Italian? No, it's a Japanese group. Everybody done. you're talking about is from Mars. <laughs> Every no, it's single not. Name everybody, everybody knows that that was the group that no, no, went and played bass in for a while. Come on, where are you on Mars? Yes, I guess I am. No, I well, guess, ask your son. I am. This is Don from Mike. That's Don. I'm the one that's that's not getting who you, what you're saying. Now, this is Mike, and we got some Chibo Macho coming up here. <laughs> well, no, Chibo Macho about show. Food. She was always singing about food. <laughs> so great. It's so cool. <laughs> it? It's it's fantastic. Can you sing a little bit of At Last for me, please? This is Mike asking this, please. Can I'm you? going to sing on the phone now. Please. Yeah, I know it's not. It's going to be great. No, it ain't. Well, so sing for him, and you'll be here in dial tone. Why? Asked, because you asked already. Because I asked first. Uh, okay. Don, the, Don asked first. I'm you the asked fan. First. You are the fan. <laughs> you are both crazy. <laughs> oh, now you want me to sing for you on the phone? Please. Just, just sing like one line for We're me. begging. We don't beg anybody. We're begging. Aww. Come on, just sing all through the night. I ain't got no keyboard right next to me. Oh, God. Do a pitch. I, <laughs> I ain't got no keyboard. I got all no right, keyboard I don't either. have a keyboard. I do now clean up my grandma since my son, <laughs> but I'm not in the right state, so he's not going to know, uh. you know, because I don't want him to talk like me. As long as you don't say, I could have went to the store. Why? That's a terrible gram grammatical error. It's my least favorite. I could have gone. Yes, yes there correct. you are. Oh, oh. oh when people say I could have went. Oh, yes, yeah, that's yes Eliza. Yeah. Yes. Have, you, have, you heard, have you heard the new way of the new funny way of saying didn't you? Like, didn't you go there? You say, didn't. Didn't you? Oh, please. That's what my assistant. You, no. See, isn't you that funny? Didn't. Didn't. <laughs> didn't. So, didn't you? Yeah. No. See, we know it's funny. We know it's funny. We, we get jokes. <laughs> we're, we're jocks. Sure. All right. Okay. Um, we do have to say goodbye now. Yeah. I mean, we've had you on a half hour now, so. Thank you for staying okay. later than you were supposed to. All right, I'm sorry I killed you there. What no, you didn't know. No, no, okay. See, now I'm going to feel bad that you're not That's okay. And you're going to go no, eat listen. your dinner, Mike. No, my kid's you coming. You haven't eaten there before. What, you got to go to a restaurant? And look around, Cafe. Come listen, on. My, kid, my kid's coming to your show tonight. If you if you hold on the line, Beth Ann will give you his no, name. No, I'll, I'll, uh, that I definitely will. And I, I'll That's give nice. you all the restaurant Thank information, you. and I'll, I'll, I'll send a car for you. Okay, wait. Thank you, Cindy. Hold on a second, please. All right. There she is. She's uh, uh, Oops. You saw on your You didn't hang up on her, did you? Yeah, hold oh. on. No, there she is. Hold on, oh. please. Got it. Okay. Ooh. You know what? Um, that's the kind of uh, person that, that can come back anytime she wants. I don't know. She gives me an ice cream headache. Course, course, we got her good. You have you to get her good piece. Because otherwise, if, if it's one of those, hey, we're here with Cindy Lauper, she's going to go on. I just got the feeling that that could have been the beginning of like another Leah Remini. I know. I know. <laughs> and <laughs> that's maybe why it's been so burned special. Before and... God. You don't want to be hurt again. Come see the special Cindy Lauper time of the month tour. <laughs> <laughs> Who was not thinking that? Oh, my God. Hey, Let come me... on. She'll poke you in the eye. That's right. That interview goes five more minutes. You're spending the night at her house. I love her. <laughs> I know. So do I. She's 51. Yeah. She looks damn good for 51. Yeah, and I want to thank you very much for not bringing up what I thought you might bring up. <laughs> oh. I really, And I know that was in your mind, and I want to no. say thank you. Not until now it was. Okay, really? But now. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, <don't... laughs> But the, the fact that you booked her to play at the the day of my birthday. I, do, so. I knew that last year. Just, yeah. She obviously, you know why I didn't bring it up? She obviously didn't remember. You know, which is good. What are you? What is this, talk? <laughs> Come on. Hot AC? You know, doesn't even yeah. remember. Crazy girl doesn't even remember she was booked on the show to sing on your birthday. She thinks they mellow when you find out you have more than one station. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah. So what happened to the Cindy Lauper song? I thought it'd be funny if you played her that. <laughs> Play with Yo-Yo? Yeah. And fun. the Osmonds? What? What? This was Rob. Whoa, whoa. Why? I don't know. He had it loaded in the machine. Hello? Hey. Hey. Cindy wants to talk to Mike real quick. Oh, no. Hey, she might be coming. On the air or off the air? On the air. Okay. On the air. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. You're on. You're back on. With Are you going to send me a car? Is that what you said? Yeah. She said you weren't going to. She we said you just fibbing. What? She Are you said. really sending well, a car? Stefan, if I said that, if, 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 if of course I'd send her a car. <laughs> All right, hold on. Hold that's on. all this is about. Hold on, this see. is Beth Ann calling in now. <laughs> Beth Ann? Yeah. Oh, worth it. Beth Ann? Yeah. Okay, well, I guess. Yeah, Mike, I mean, if she, if she wants to come, absolutely. Really? I mean, that's for true? Yes. 
Well, she actually didn't hear it. I heard it. And then I said, oh, honey, he's, he's not really going to send a car for you. And she said, what do you mean? Of course he I said, what, 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 I, what interest would I have it. in lying about that? Okay. Well, then I... See, but he's not, not one of those guys, Beth Ann. See, we thought he was not. one of those I'm guys. Yeah, I'm right. misjudged. He's just a boaster, right? I will send a car full of cupcakes. <laughs> You two continue to discuss this. Yes. Thanks. Hold on, please, Cindy. Anything she wants. Bye, Beth. Bye. So you think you might be able to get her out to the old uh, spread tonight? No, you know she's not going to come out there. Yes, she does. She's, but, but, but you know what? What I, I mean, I, you know, if she said, yeah, I'd like to, of course. But I mean, you know, but she, but you know, didn't you get that from the tone that it was just. Beth Ann's Ooh. saying that I wouldn't send the car, and then she was to say, well, let's ask him if he'd send the car, because Probably she's just being probably. difficult. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Probably. And now I feel like I'm having my period. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And to think that I almost hung up on her like three minutes into that, when oh, she was real serious on her ass. We have to tough it out, I think, sometimes yep. with, those, with those interviews, because it was getting so... Heavy. I mean, she just. Why did you ask me, honey? It's a compliment. It's a freaking compliment that you're 51 and you yeah. still look pretty good. Although I think I'd have to use the Kathy Lee Gifford rule on her. Oh, really? I'm afraid I'd have she to. Does, she she went through a period where she at the beginning of her career when she had all the hits and it was kind of like, huh. And then recently when I saw her, I was very surprised at how good she looked. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't I, know she had that hit at 30 years of age. If I was going to be her lover. Mm -hmm. I am afraid that I would have to duct tape her mouth. <laughs> Much like Kathy Lee. I agree. She's she's an eccentric one. She's uh -huh. a cute one. Yes. She's an eccentric one. <laughs> but I don't know. And she is still on the phone with Beth Ann. Oh, that conversation. You you well, you played a segment of that conversation. <laughs> that's the way that's going. What if she ends up coming to your Jack in the Box tonight? <laughs> Karaoke night. Thanks. Look around. Cafe. I couldn't wow. be more proud. Anything can happen. God. God. <laughs> I couldn't be more proud. Wow. No, that's not going to happen. I bet it does. She's still on the phone. I bet. What the hell? Maybe she's not going anywhere. Let me see. Where's that? Did I already throw away the, the plug? The she's giving Beth Ann information on where to send the car and, and what And your time. son is going to the concert tonight. Yeah. So that's maybe cool. uh, maybe you could invite him to your, uh, to your place. Uh, is he old enough to get in? No. No, Would she eat for no not after nine. Okay. Huh? He's got a fake ID. What's that? Would she eat for free? Of course. Drink? Yeah. All right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> There's rent to pay. Uh, <laughs> looking at her schedule, I don't think she's got a gig tomorrow. Well, well, she's, got go. a, uh, she's got the night off. It's uh. Oh, hold on. Now she's got to be. In, I take it back. She has to be in New Jersey tomorrow night. Oh. So how can she? So they'll be out tonight. Yeah. They'll or, fly out tonight or drive out tonight. Or maybe they'll just they'll drop by your place tonight. Oh, yeah. Which I, be, that'd be kind of ironic, don't you think? Because you, 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 you're, 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 I'm like nutty, really nutty for Cindy Law. Yeah, but you know that I would do that if, I mean, if, you know, I would, of course I would provide transportation. Oh, she's sending tonight. a car. Yeah. <laughs> but the fans in the back go, no, he didn't mean that. <laughs> hey, you're killing me here. <laughs> you don't even really like her. She's a celebrity. <laughs> She's a star. No, I know. It's a Vanessa. That's what I find it's ironic. A star, I know. Maybe. If I was in your position, if I, you know, if I owned the the, the look around cafe, I'd send a big car. You yeah. bet your ass. A full size car, get like a, a Cavalier. <laughs> <laughs> a Cavalier. A Buick. Get a nice rickshaw. Sure. A Prius. <laughs> Prius is a tough car to get now. I know. I was in back of one driving in today. So was I. A very today slow too. moving Prius. Yeah. Right. And doesn't it seem to you that everybody that drives one looks like Larry David? Absolutely. <laughs> Men and women. Male or female. <laughs> right. Okay, we're going to break our thanks to Cindy Lauper yeah. uh, to help us start the show. She is still on the phone with Beth Ann right now. I'll poke you in the eye. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Are you retarded? It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? No, I'm not retarded. Because a retarded person can make a cup of coffee. Right. Am I right, Tom? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't really know much about the limitations of the handicap. I know in an employment agency that hires out retarded people for $4 an hour. So, if making a cup of coffee is too difficult a task for you, Miss Bennett, mm -hmm. perhaps you'd be good enough to let me know. And I'll contact this agency and... Give a retarded person a job. Introducing Average Joe. <laughs> I wasn't too rough on her, was I? Well, she is new and all. The Don and Mike Show. 
Zero tolerance for stupidity. The Don and Mike Show. Right. 20 years ago. I think it was 20 years ago. You know, I wish I had a freaking number one record. Cindy Lauper, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> And I see you telling that, bro, the truth. When when Buddy Scott, mm-hmm. tight ass of all tight ass program director. Right. First of all, he was awful to work. Buzz and I working at WBBM FM in Chicago. Yeah. One of the best impressions that Buzz Burbank does is of uh, your former program director, Buddy Scott. Because I'll be honest with you. You are not a disc jockey. You have never been a disc jockey, and you're not respecting the music. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, besides being a hotliner, meaning a, a guy who would call you in between records to tell you that you stink, right. or tell you what you're doing wrong, uh, besides restricting radio personality in every way, right. he also really <laughs> seemed to enjoy the fact that... And I am not exaggerating this. At any given time, the radio station we worked at, the Hot Hit Station, Mm -hmm. played 12 records. Yeah. Total? I'm not exaggerating. Total, like all day? Currents, 12 records. Oh, my God. And we literally played the same records every 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the same... In the same order. The number one record played every hour, didn't it? Yes, yeah. on the top of the hour. Yeah. Wow. So if it was some some fag song like like Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, <laughs> it would be every hour. Yeah. Here's your most requested song. Uh-huh. And I would always do stuff like lie and say, Buddy, I promise nobody called for that. People were calling <laughs> for this. Anyway, he was the last guy in the world to add a record. That yeah. was his other big thing. Power. That we're going to wait until the record is absolutely played everywhere else in the world right before it gets played on our station which means it sucked to work there of course but this was one of the few records that he actually came in like the day that it came out he was excited about he it he said this now who you know, but well buzz you'll have to do it he came down to the studio i was doing the nighttime show and he said now who says we don't play uh, new music yeah we play the new music <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I'm having Cindy Lauper. <laughs> so anyway, then Cindy Lauper. And then he would go back to his tab and his moon pies. <laughs> and he, his, he would drink tab and eat moon that pies? That was his favorite snack. And his, and his disco ball. Yeah, he had one in his, his office. Yeah. Now, we did have some kick-ass Friday parties at B96. And you knew that they were good parties when... Well, let me see. When I started there, I did the night show. Then I did the morning show. And it, you know it would be a good station to work at when on a Friday afternoon, right. everybody from the morning show was still downtown at the radio station right. ready for Buddy's 5 o'clock party on Friday. So he was good enough to do that for people. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Did he like to uh, celebrate? Is, was he a festive guy? Yes. Yes, he was. And God, was he hideous. <laughs> when I say a grotesque human being, you know, as described on this show, how mm-hmm. handsome we are. Right. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rob. <laughs> Serious, seriously, now. Oh Compared God. to him. Right. It is. I'm George Clooney, and you're Brad Pitt. I mean, forget it. He is like he was like Jabba the Hutt. Really, he was that big and fat, that huge. At the time, he was the only CBS executive at that level who could fly first class because no coach seat would accommodate. <laughs> so anyway, he was a tight ass. But it got and uh, and Cindy Lauper. Come on. Come on, sing sing for us next time. Yeah. So we'll see how she treats my kid tonight at the show. I thank you to Cindy Lauper. And that's nice that you love me. Yeah, that's that. very uh, nice of her. Um, uh, oh, my kid and my family. Last night, uh, I was going to mention this right when she called. Last night, my wife called during the last break of the show and said, don't forget to stop at the uh, oh. store to get popcorn. Yeah. yeah, stop at the Piggly Wiggly and get some popcorn. Right, I couldn't go to 7-Eleven to get the microwave kind. Yeah, mm-hmm. she wanted it in a jar, the real, real kernels. Mm-hmm. Right, so I said, oh, why is that? And it's because, you know, now keep in mind the countdown to the the boy going back to school, about 12 days. Mm-hmm. And it's next Saturday that he and I will be, you know, and, and I'm finding that there are, it, there's a busy season now in my life, mm-hmm. and the busy season pretty much starts the moment he gets out of school in the summer, mm-hmm. and, which means i got to be on his ass all the time, mm-hmm. followed in no particular order by Mother's Day, uh, my wife's birthday, right? Uh, my anniversary, right. which is this coming weekend, this coming Saturday, 23. and then it'll be getting him off to school. Very busy. So that's you know those are the four big major things that are happening. That's a lot. And and because she's been at odds with him recently, you know, I've t- chronicled this. They they fight a lot, you know, and, and they've worked things out. But she wants to manufacture this this 
we're all getting along okay, and let's get them off to school with the best possible uh, send off we can. So mm -hmm. we're going to have a family night, like movie that. night, movie night. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to get the popcorn, so we I go to the store and I call her up when I'm at the store. I said, "Now I, want, I don't want to screw this up. Have this be another simple job. What is it that you want?" And she describes perfectly. I want the kind just popcorn kernels in the jar. Right. Now, I'm looking. They don't have, like, any organic or naturally grown. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking but for look. I'm anything. I'm looking for anything that's off-brand. Finally, the only thing I see is Orville Redenbacher. So I call her up. I go, is this okay? She says, yes, that's fine. Huh. So I make the special trip. I go there. I come home with the stuff. Now, sit, that's a brand name. Sit down. We have a pleasant dinner. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go watch this movie. And she says, does anybody want popcorn? And she had just made dinner, something uh -huh. she very rarely does, and it was quite good. And I said, no thanks. And Bart said, no thanks. And then oh. she said, well, I'm not going to make the popcorn then. I said, why wouldn't you make the popcorn? She said, well, I'm not going to have it if, you're, if you guys aren't going to have it. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I never wanted the popcorn. She popcorn said, seemed to be the no, focus of the evening. No, but here again now, here's what she said. She said, but it's movie night. I said, yeah. She said, if we were going to the movies, you'd get popcorn. I said, yeah, I, I guess I guess we would, but mm -hmm. I just had dinner like two seconds ago. Um, I don't want any popcorn. And she said, all right, we'll just forget it. And then I, st I stood there holding like this jar of, of, of popcorn. Like, Hard fought for. Like, you know, you know, who's the retard now? I'm sitting there looking at it like, like it's me. Like The popcorn that you struggled out into the weather to go get, right? And, and uh, we, di we didn't end up having it. But the night ended up being fine. Good. Uh, we watched that movie Bubba Ho Tap. For those of you thinking about running that, Bubba Ho Hum. Really? Really? No, oh, it's got... Huh. I, I didn't care for it. It's got the... It's, it's, Your uh, kid likes it, though, right? Yeah, it's got Bruce, it. Bruce Campbell in it and... Um, What's his name? Ozzie Davis. Mm -hmm. And I told you, Bruce Campbell is Elvis in an old age home, and Ozzie Davis is JFK. And Briscoe County Jr., right? Yeah, that's right. And just didn't think of the B movies. That is a classic B movie. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it for me, but uh, the boys seemed to think it was good. Anyway, so we all got to spend time together last night. And, right. And we're counting down now to his getting back to college. And I, I get in here today, and I'm looking at stuff around the radio station. And Mike, I'm wondering how come you. Mr. Voiceman, Mr. Known as as, as a America's number one mimic. Right. How come you're not in uh, business like the other boys are here? I wasn't asked. Well, now listen. Here's here's the deal. That the other boys here, they uh, you know as it was well chronicled. Right. <laughs> you're uh, listen. I'll put myself in the category. We are all whores. Yeah, and I, I certainly demonstrated how much of a whore I am in the last segment. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. I, I like to think that I've got it under control. You have it under control uh, but more, I'm more than most. But I'm a whore. Uh, Buzz is a whore. Yes. Rob's the biggest whore. We could all find uh, chips on the whore scale for, for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Now, something that obviously you do, you do commercials because right. you're good with the voices. That's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's your job on the show. You're fantastic. Buzz does commercials because Buzz has, you know, the Buzz voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just heard Buzz on TV today for um, Marlo Furniture. Marlo Furniture, right. right. Hey, way to go. Nice Thank score. You. Thank you. And then there's, then there's my man. That's right. I'm I'm easy and I try harder. There's my man Rob. So <laughs> yes, what what they've done, at least for Buzz, and I guess Rob is going to get this as well. Right. There's the a little one sheet here that has a photo of Buzz. Right. And it has the Don and Mike Show logo, and it says Bu Buzz Burbank of the Don and Mike Show. Sure. Now let me read you what it says about Buzz, and I'm going to read you what it what the one about Rob says. All right. Good. And Good. fellas, these are handouts that. Since they're out there in the hallway by the sales office, and you know, that's one great thing mm -hmm. about having moved our office mm -hmm. back downstairs. Yeah, you get to see everything that's going on down here. Right. You know, being up on the third floor before, where you're kind of isolated away from the rest, the, the, the real part of the radio station. That was by that, design. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get to see good stuff like this in the sales office. So it's Buzz's picture. And, oh, and, and who, do, who do these go to? Uh, as sales, our salespeople give them to prospective clients, people who may be interested in advertising or maybe who already advertise uh, with us but would like one of us to do their commercial. The way I get it is you hand that to a client and the client just starts throwing money at the station. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here is what it says about Buzz. It has the photo of Buzz wearing his Miami Vice shirt. Sure. See that? And he's got right. the, the suit coat on. Buzz Burbank is a veteran award-winning news. <laughs> yeah, well, you already were laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I did not pre-read it. Pre-read it. I did not pre-read it. I am too. 
<laughs> oh my! Okay. okay, start again. Yeah, well, get a running start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. Secret Santa is worth one thousand two hundred dollars. We men mentioned good. that, yeah. and we'll be playing. Uh, name that NFL player later today. So we urge everybody to participate in the in the award winning Secret Sound contest. <laughs> Buzz Burbank. Dot dot dot. Is a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> you could end it right there. Yeah. He's a veteran because we discussed that. Yeah. He is a veteran of those those wars where it was so cold. Very cool. Buzz Burbank is a veteran award winning news anchor and a prominent character on the nationally syndicated Don and Mike show, carried exclusively on the DC market by WJFK. For over a dozen years here, Buzz has brought a Midwestern sensibility right. to every message he delivers. Okay, this is getting better. Buzz began his broadcast career nearly three decades ago in both radio and television. But in recent years, he's become a popular commercial spokesman. Buzz uses humor and creativity along with his... <laughs> I don't even remember, so along, I can't wait to hear Along with his, his credibility uh -huh. yeah. to bring satisfying results. Yeah! Advertisers by you. You can buy credibility. Uh, yes. yes, you can. Anyway, just, sure. Hey, just let Buzz deliver your message. Yeah. Now, there's one. Rob wants to get some of this action going. Yes. He can't yes, handle all the clients. Of no. course right, he can. Right, so. Right. so Rob wants to start throwing his hat into the ring to do more commercials. Good. Right. right. Now, you know, Rob's my best friend. Yeah. And, and I say this with a lot of love. Right. He ain't got what you got, and he ain't got what you got. No, but I bring something different. That's true. <laughs> something worthwhile. <laughs> now, I'll say, if I'm out there and I got a business and I'm listening to the show right now, first off, I wouldn't pick my voice. I've got the worst radio voice in the world. Mm -hmm. Of you guys, I would say, well, my, uh, Mike's got the, the Mike's got a million voices, a regular speaking voice. Right. Very professional. Buzz has got the, you know, the uh, yeah. monster guy. You know, right? And what does Rob bring? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, humor. See, you're, humor. You're, I don't know. That's, That's it. it. That's it. Right you're, in there. My, you're in my category. I don't know. Other than like, are we like character voices? <laughs> but we don't have to put one on. Or anyway, how does it do? Here's what Rob wrote for his, uh, and, and this is what's going to be made for uh, Rob, where it says on the top, Rob Spiewak of the Don and Mike Show. Very good. Has a nice candid photo. And this is incidentally as written by Rob. Rob wrote his own. Yes, it's right. actually revised from what the sales guy wrote, but most of it is mine. So I'll take all the credit. <laughs> a popular fixture on the Don and Mike Show, Rob Spiewak has been a producer. <laughs> Writer <laughs> and jester for over 12 years with the radio gods. Rob Spielak's soulless contributions to the Don and Mike show. <laughs> this is soulless. Soulless. Yes. Yeah. S O U L L E S S. Soulless. soulless. Yeah, it looks better on paper than it is. Yeah, I can't wait till that car dealer says that. What's this mean? Yeah. Rob's, <laughs> Rob's soulless contributions to the Don and Mike show have made for a rather embarrassing legacy, but one that's been profitable for advertisers. <laughs> this is what a whore he is. <laughs> Mr. Spielak's commercial work and spokesperson, spokesperson sponsor have delivered for businesses, and they can deliver for your business. That's right. Put Rob's creativity, sense of humor, and recognizable voice to work for you. <laughs> See, and that's how I attack the voices. Sure, mm -hmm. they're recognizable. Yeah. You can pick it out. Yeah, and the people, no, people probably recognize you more than anybody else. Yeah. By the way, that's Rob's familiar voice that you hear booming out of the FedEx field PA during the pregame <laughs> of every Redskins. Put it all okay. in there. Use all your assets. Sell, right. baby, sell. Mm -hmm. Outside of the Don and Mike show, you may also recognize him from his delightful infomercials <laughs> on WJMK. Yeah. Now and they do delight. Oh, my God. Has Rob Spiewak sold out? Ah, uh, good question. You bet he has. <laughs> and so will your inventory. <laughs> Isn't that great? If you take advantage of his shameless and very large flathead full of useless information, <laughs> Rob Spiewak writes and delivers copy that engages the Listeners and keeps them listening. Right. Rob is married and the father of two. If you hire him, his children will eat tonight. <laughs> oh, and we God. thank you. That's it. Yeah. Use the kids. Yeah. Everything. You're yeah. awful. And oh, I can be I called it. during normal business hours right here. <laughs> okay, stop it with that stuff. Oh, <laughs> my thing. God. Both yeah. of you guys are just... It'll, it'll be better with a picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I don't care.
<laughs> oh, that's great. That'll fix it real good. That is great. Well, it's what we all do. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh my what, God. What you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. You, you know. And uh, and now I'm I'm sensing that the, that probably because of the way you're positioning yourself with all of this, they. They'd have to make you a pretty significant offer well, to get you back into the. I mean, well, the, the bottom line, be honest, with you and I, we we have to do what yeah, we have to do to fulfill right. our contract. We we do commercials, but then you you have side deals. That you I have do. tons of side deals. Yes, and listen, you know, color me jealous. Nobody wants me. Oh, that's oh, not true. That no. can't be true. Now, no, come on, we'll now be honest. One of these sheets. I don't Why don't want, you be I honest want, about this? Want to be on, I would never want to be on one of those sheets. <laughs> you still have the same offer open, right? You would do it for twenty percent of the cruise line. <laughs> That's it. And it's the only one he's ever flirted with, ladies and gentlemen. That's the big right. brown boat. A long time ago. Right. Carnival, right, at, right after they dumped Kathy Lee. Right, right. 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 Okay. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to all of you. <laughs> on, all of your, on all of your continued successes. All of you. Thanks. For goodness sake. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. And, and I like Midwestern sensibility more than anything else. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> credibility. Credibility. Yeah. Credi uh, credibility. Uh, sensibility or credibility? Well, uh, well they're both credibility right earlier. Yeah. Midwestern <laughs> sensibility is the phrase. And Which leads to credibility, right? And in either case, I think of when you wore that mask on your she had mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I know. I'm back aware of we, all of that. Back when we did that right. on the show. But yeah, if people sure. are still buying credibility, I'm still selling. <laughs> and for you know, for everybody in the room that day, I thought you were credible. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. He was he was incredible. Unbelievable. Got log. Uh, you just said what Dennis says again. Because it is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, unbelievable. I'm getting an ice cream headache. This is too funny. <laughs> oh, but, oh, okay, boy. I'm not the I'm not the Beautiful lady from Chicago, and you might as well include him in the mix too. <laughs> oh yeah, let's Lord get him knows one. he, you know, as far as he counts. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> He's done commercials. Absolutely. Uh, let's clear these out. Uh, clear these lines out right now. Here's your chance to win one thousand two hundred dollars. Wow. With the secret sound, a common everyday sound. That was credible, Buzz. Yeah, thank you. Your wow was very credible. What I saw. I thought it was a grunt. It was a wow. It was a wow. <laughs> it was a grunty wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. You think you're Siegfried and Roy? <laughs> Sit over there going, wow. It's like you look, you look like Paul Lind a little bit. Going, wow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Some Charles Nelson Riley happening there. Wow. 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 <laughs> um, $1,200. If you can identify this common everyday sound, 877-365-3636. Be the 100th caller right now in good luck. This is the Don and Mike Show. A bitter cold night. The Giants, with a victory against the Eagles tonight, could reduce the edge to a half a game. I'm not on camera now. We're in Philadelphia at Franklin Field. The score, the New York football Giants 13, the Philadelphia Eagles 9. Now in their 20th season, it's the Don and Mike Show. No kidding, now in the 20th season. Wow. Uh, later on today's show, name that NFL player. All right. The guys left uh, 20 chances calling with yes or no questions. Good. See if you can identify the NFL starting player. Uh, don't forget, uh, watch that uh, Training Spouses show tonight on Fox. Mm -hmm. I only mention that because we had the lady on, the mommy on uh, yesterday who's going to be on tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. speaking of argumentative, it got a little argumentative yesterday, too. <laughs> and I saw a longer promotional announcement for that show. Right. She is a handful. Is wow. she really? I can't wait yeah. to see it. I'm looking forward to it. Now, there's good news and bad news with that. Here's... What originally was bad news, that mommy yesterday really didn't like the way that our interview went. No, not one little bit. And she said something to the people at Fox. Mm -hmm. However, the people at Fox are very cool, mm -hmm. and they've decided that this might be a good, a good place for them to pitch to get some new mommies for trading spouses. Very good. So tomorrow, someone from Fox okay. has requested some time to come on the show to wow. say <laughs> where they're going to be casting Fox smells sulfur for more trading mommies. <laughs> do they have any uh, like requirements? Like, do you have to be fat or hot? No. <laughs> Don't know any of that. All I know is that... Just upper middle class. 
what? What I had heard was that they do these interviews all with the DJs everywhere. Right. There have only been two two contestants, uh, two wives, two mommies thus far uh -huh. that have done the interviews that have complained about the interviews. Both mommies that complained about the interviews were on our show. <laughs> wow. So then they got a copy of the tape and they said, hey, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. How would you like to have the lady? We want to cast to find more mommies. Sure. Uh -huh. Be on the show. Sure. So that's, uh, See, that's smart thinking in Fox. That's tomorrow on the show. And then Thursday, oh gosh, go ahead and, and pick boogers all the way up to the third knuckle on your index finger. Somebody from Dale Earnhardt uh, Incorporated dot com, click, click, NASCAR, yeah, no, no. something. Click, click, click. Get out of school, drive that Corvette. Get out of school, drive that Corvette. No need to drive that Corvette. What do you drive that Corvette for anyway? I don't know. It's uh, NASCAR. Thursday, we'll do something with NASCAR. I'm dead. Do NASCAR. Don't dare do Hello, Corvette. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hi, guys. Am I caller 100? Yes, you are, my friend. Awesome. Yes, it is. What's your name? My name's Steve. I'm in San Francisco. Steve, thank you for listening. Steve, you've got the Starsky and Hutch DVD starring Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. Starsky and Hutch now on Divid and Video. Are you, Great. Are you actually listening on the San Francisco station? Yes, Don. I'm one of the two listeners out here. That is very exciting news mm -hmm. that we're actually speaking to someone who's listening on our San Francisco affiliate. Because, you know, it's even... It's 15.50 a.m. Even though we're not supposed to talk about the rating service anymore because our company's got right. a problem with them, mm -hmm. uh, I heard it through the grapevine mm -hmm. that our station in San Francisco does not even show up in the ratings. It's, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's very sad. It, gets a, it's not, it doesn't even have a 0, 0.00 next to it. They don't even bother printing it. No one's listening. Oh, change. But, but see, Mike, there's the argument for the whole ratings thing, which we can't get into. No. Right? Obviously, somebody's listening. Yeah, and you know, if one person's there and he's calling in, who knows how many people are just uh, sitting there, you know, eating... Seven? Eight? <laughs> I'm, like trying to, I'm trying to spread the good word. How many people are sitting down there eating... Gira Deli chocolate. <laughs> Here you go. For $1,200. Uh, your clues are, for the secret sound, here are your clues. Uh, hygiene, yep. personal hygiene, mm -hmm. Bob the intern, and alcohol. Do you think you have a guess already? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I've been listening for about 10 years. I used to go to college out in Sacramento. I have it. I think I have an idea. All right. Okay. All right, good. Well, then we'll play you the sound. Uh, and we wish you good luck. Oh, shut up, Rob. Caller, name you know, this sound. I know you didn't say that, but you were saying something under your breath, something to him, weren't you? Well, I just wanted to say that must be a fine college. <laughs> oh, Rob. You're right, Rob. It sucks. <laughs> Here's the sound. There it is, man. Let me play it for you one more time so you get to hear it one more time. Common everyday sound. There it is. Hold on with your answer. Oh, here comes Mike now. Girls just want to have fun. Yeah. 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 Okay, just in case she happens to be listening now. Yes. Cindy Lauper, mm -hmm. tonight mm -hmm. you have my permission. If you'd like to do a Mrs. Mrs. Robinson with my son. Wow. <laughs> that is generous of you. Yeah. Uh, I would throw him over immediately. The fan told me she was making inquiries in the back room. <laughs> inquiries about what? Me. Oh. Cindy Lauper was? Yes. And, and Beth Ann once again supported me. I'll tell you after he gets <laughs> Okay. All right. Great. It's another one of those fine... Watch my back, Beth Ann. Is, is the little Lopper available? <laughs> for $1,200, for $1, what is that sound? God, I'm probably not even close, but is it the pulling of the metal lid of a, when you open a bottle of mouthwash? Hmm. I need you to be more specific, please. There's that little... No, like, yeah, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> that's right. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. we're sorry. Oh, no, no. we're sorry. Oh, okay. we're sorry. No, that's wrong. College man. And the uh, the secret sound now. I heard that, bud. One thousand three hundred dollars. I'm kidding. On tomorrow's episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being the one in San Francisco. Oh, I love you guys so Thank much, you. and I'm trying to spread the word out here. Thank, Thank you for listening. Thank on, you. Uh, K Y C Y. Why? Should be uh, KNBL. Uh, nobody's listening. Uh, okay. Yeah, Beth Ann recounted the conversation that apparently, um, uh, she was like, well, asked, uh, you know, is he married? And, no, he's single. This is Cindy Lauper yeah. asking Beth Ann about huh. you. I don't know how exactly it went down, but all I know is, and she said, is he good looking or is he hot or something? Like that? And, and, uh, and Beth Ann's comment to Cindy Lauper was, he's very nice. Hold on. <laughs> or something like that. I'm not sure. 
exactly hey. how it went. Get in here for a second, please. I'm <laughs> not sure exactly what went down. Is she coming to your uh, to your Jack in the Box I, tonight? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no earthly car? idea. Are you sending she a car? car? I would if she wants From Ms. Lauper? It, she was on the phone with uh, Beth Ann McBride for, for an hour yeah. after the, the interview. Wow. Maybe, uh, hey. So, um... What about Cindy Lauper and Mike? What was she asking about Mike? Well, she she was on the phone with me for a while. And, okay, a good uh, long time. About yeah, about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow! And she was asking what? Well, she after about like five minutes of giving me the details for Bart, she said, "So I was like, she did her little accent. She was so embarrassed, and she went right to Mike, <laughs> and asked if uh, you were married." And I said, "No." Just out of the blue, out of left field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. I said, but he does have a girlfriend. And she got a little upset. And then she said, well, is he cute? And I said, he's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There, That's good. I'm glad you recapped that conversation. Thank you, Beth Ann. Why are you killing him like that? Thank you. Why are you killing him like that? Of course, he's very handsome. Yeah. That goes without saying. All right. Okay. No, you, All right. See, you, say that, look, you say that to another girl. That's yeah. like a guy saying, right. you know, hey, what she look like? And yeah. here's the difference. A guy, a guy would be straight. A, a guy wouldn't say she's got a nice person. A guy would say... She's a face. Uh, you know, right. Butter, butterface. <laughs> As Joe likes to say, butterface. Yeah. Right. That's what a guy says. Thank so, you. So anyway, uh, are you... Are you sending a car? Is Mike sending a yes, car? Yes, did you make arrangements for the, uh, for the limousine? No, I did not. Okay. So she is not coming to the to your place? No, she's going to be here and gone, but during the tour, I think she'll be checking in. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. So there's that. And good. I'll probably ask about Mike. All right. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll brief you on how to handle that one for, for me, too. You know? That is, if, if my son don't get her first tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. The side deals. <laughs> the side deals, okay. Yeah. Uh, We're not sure would have been the answer. I would have been the, not the definitive no. How perverted is that? Right. I might be turned on by watching that scene. Oh, my God. Oh! <laughs> Cindy Lauper was my son. Ah, oh, God, bad! <laughs> bad man! Joking. <laughs> God, he got me all loogie. Wow. Kidding. That would be that uh, perhaps Lauper would be checking in in about nine months. <laughs> oh, God. the check. God. <laughs> Shoot me now. Oh, my God. I would go blind. Oh, dear. Thank you, man. Little orange-haired baby. <laughs> <laughs> Walk backstage at Wolf Trap tonight. <laughs> Shit. Legs of Kimbo. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's my sweet boy. <laughs> Way to go, young man. Yeah. I'll poke you in the eye. I'll poke you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, my God. All of these calls from San Francisco. Let's see how many count. How many people are actually listening. Yeah, and it, count, it has to be on the San Francisco station. Sure. Correct. Uh, Jason? Good afternoon, gentlemen. What what station are you listening to us on? 1550. KYCY? AM 1550. Just want uh, you guys Stanford. to know that the show's great and glad to have you here in the city. How does it, Thank you, how my does friend. it sound? Does it sound good? Sounds sounds like AM. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. Honest. There's AM and then there's, oh, there's <laughs> more. There's AM and then there's AM. Here is uh, Mark also in, uh, well, I don't know where he's from. Uh, Bakersfield. Bakersfield. What can we do for you? Sacramento South. Do the dance, boys. No, no we're not going to uh, do the dance. Not up for it. for it. Get out of here. Not if you ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, hold on a second. Matt. Hello, Matt. Donna Mike, Radio God. Yeah, well, are you listening on the San Francisco station? Yes, yes, I am. Ooh. Okay, all right. I, you know, I, this is interesting. This I got to like tell you something, though, guys. People. These guys cut you off every day, uh, either the, after the second hour or the third hour, every single day, to replace you with some boring piece of crap uh, financial watch. Mm -hmm. Do they really? But yeah, right, every, every day. We just get into your show out here, and then we got to go try to tune in the Sacramento. But right now, so. as we speak, are our voices wafting through Fisherman's Wharf? <laughs> God. True that. Jive. That's a yes. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> bye -bye. You know, that's like what drives me crazy on the Weather Channel. Right. And I'm a nerd. Oh, when they, when they get geographical? Yeah, here's the thing. First off, here's why I watch the Weather Channel. I like the weather, but also, generally speaking, Pretty hot women, except on the weekend. Sometimes you get a pig. A lot of pregnant women on the Weather Channel. Yeah, well, Mike, some of us find that sexy. Yeah, I know. Okay, so <laughs> you know, I know, yeah, baby. Sure. Uh, but I've noticed when I'm watching the Weather Channel that they love throwing in the and if you're going to be going to Pittsburgh tonight. Uh, in Pittsburgh, maybe you'll be making the trek up Mount Washington. Right. It will be mm -hmm. partly sunny in Seattle. The local reference. If you're thinking about going to the craft fair outside Safeco Field tonight, mm -hmm. and they mispronounce and they don't know what they're talking about. It's just nice to know that out in San Francisco right now, people are listening to our show, riding a cable car and munching on sourdough. <laughs> and rice a rice -a <laughs> The San Francisco <laughs> tree. Hello, Paula. Hey, 
Yeah. Hey, 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 Paula. Oh, my I'm God. I marry you. I am a first-time caller, and I've listened to you for, I swear, like 10 years. Are you from? Are you listening in San Francisco? Well, I live smack dab in the middle of San Francisco and Sacramento, so I get you on two stations. Oh, oh. gotcha. All right. Thank, thank you, uh, Paula. I love you. Thanks. Oh, we love uh, you. Look, look how mean I was. I didn't mean to <laughs> do, didn't that. Mean to do that. Uh, we love to hurt you. Yes, Paul. Hello, we didn't mean that. Cheryl? Well, this is all we have now. People calling, saying they're listening on the San Francisco. Yeah. No, see, I don't count that last one at all. She was saying, you know, that sometimes, like sometimes. Cheryl? If she travels south. Cheryl? Jill. Uh, pardon me? Jill. Jill. Rhymes with Cheryl. Jill I can't Brett. understand why you, that might have been misinterpreted. Hey, yeah. Jill. That's C-H- C-H-E-R-Y-L. Uh-huh. Jill? Or, on the screen. I'm or just J-I-L-L Listen, with hi, you. Hi, Jill. Jill, I'm going to ask a favor. Yes. Could you pull the receiver just a few inches from your mouth? Well, it's on a cell phone, so I'll try. Okay. Are you, you're listening on the San Francisco station, too? I am, but it only works in my car. <laughs> That's a ringing endorsement. Yes. K-Y-C-Y. It only works in your car. (laughs) And they only have you on maybe about two hours a day. That's what we're hearing about. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll look into that. But thank you for listening for the two hours a day that we're on that you can get us in your car. Yeah. Well, thank you. Lady, (laughs) what kind of car do you drive? Honda. Yeah. What kind of Honda? Accord. Okay. Good for you. Were you you thinking MV? I was. I was too. Yeah. yeah all the Thinking way. what? Mini, these Don't guys, worry about it. These guys, <laughs> these guys got a thing about minivans. I got a thing about the Honda Element. If Minivan? I'm young. That's if nice. you're if you're driving a Honda Element right now. Listen, I don't want you listening to our show. I would be embarrassed <laughs> to have you pull up to a stoplight with your windows rolled down right. and have the beautiful sounds of this show wafting out while everybody around you is saying. That is the dumbest looking car I've ever seen. Why don't we do this just to to make it consistent so we're not really alienating too many people? Uh-huh. Why don't you just bring the element into the MV category? My, just I, just no, for the hell of it. Love I, to have your yellow box. I mean, you could really. No. It, it's a yellow box. No, no, no. I I have nothing against I, minivans as you do, and for whatever reason. Now, Rob, you're on the mini uh, van thing. That was Mike's thing. But I agree. Then driving back from Atlantic City over the weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Incredible idiocy. A mini a minivan, especially coming out of toll gates, you know, really with, with, with where the accelerator is literally pressed down as far as they can, so that they can shoot out of the gate mm-hmm. and then slow down to their forty-five mile an hour regular. What you've got, guys, what guys. you've got is something that's cubically the same size as a studio apartment <laughs> on four wagon wheels. How uh-huh. can it accelerate? <laughs> this is a stupid car. Stupid car. Stupid. I'm car. with you, Spiewak. It's not a van. It's not a car. All it is. is you speak annoying. for yourself. And I, I am. There's nothing wrong with a minivan. There right. is. I used to have a minivan. And but, but you wised up. Mini- yeah, my kid got bigger. That's right. Minivan's dumb. <laughs> MVD. <laughs> now, Honda Element, dumb. Minivan. Is this the first time we've heard this Honda Element thing, or you've been on this No, for a I've while? said this for a while. All right. for a long... Are you still there? Yeah. Cheryl, yeah. Jill. Or Jill. Jill. Phyllis. Oh, there's Cheryl again. I'm not even getting Jill or Cheryl. What I'm getting is, oh. <laughs> now, listen. Oh. <laughs> Honey, thank you. Thank you for the call. You're welcome. Hey, uh, hey, Jill? Yes? Cheryl? Bye. Bye. Hi. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, I understand. Let me, let me just... It only works in my car. Let me diagnose some of this. I understand. Yeah, I understand, to a certain extent, the Mike minivan... There's many levels Hatred. to Mike. Let me peel oh, back. Pray, pray, no. Let me peel back. So the onion? No, does Mike O'Mara? Let me peel back the onion. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you. I get a vibe from him when he does this. And he's usually right because I, I think I know where first, he may be going. First, there's just the fact that, you know, idiots drive all kinds of cars, right? You happen to notice the minivan. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. You happen to notice the minivan. I do. I seem to have more run-ins it's with minivans. It's predominantly minivan, driven so. by moms, right. by soccer moms. Right. right. It's a reminder. I'm and sorry. men men that don't possess all the parts. Okay. Mm. Mike, I used to be one of those men. Right. I used yes. to have to have that. Okay. All it is, it's, it's because of the things that what has worked out in your personal life. Okay, that's, guilty. That's, that is what I. All right, maybe I'm guilty. That's why I believe you hate minivans. Maybe and, I'm guilty because it I represents the secure family. nuclear family yes. of which mine is not one of the does not fall into I that category. I didn't want to say that, but yes. But even I will tell you this: 
I will tell you this. Yeah, what? But I, uh, even when every everybody was together under the same roof, it was SUV, baby. Yeah, and there's right, no but, reason. Oh, there's no, hold no on. You pipe down for a second. Just <laughs> pipe down for a second. <laughs> You've only recently started a hatred of minivans mm -hmm. since yeah. the, the crumble of the Roman what Empire. Is, you know, you're driving along and you see the 45 mile an hour speed. Okay, I got it. Wait I, know, a minute. I know what you're the talking about. The minivans cruising along in front of you. You've got the mom, the dad, the two kids, the perfect little things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So right. you, don't piggyback on his thing. Because this is just an emotional issue with Mike. Well, he's a hater. you got to give him credit for that. I know he's a hater. <laughs> Love to hate, live to hate. But even when I worked for a car dealership that sold them, I could not endorse them. I said Carrie did, and then she backed into a tree. <laughs> so maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, I, you know, that's what it is with uh, him. Yeah. That's exactly what, mm -hmm. when his wife backed into a tree. Yeah, I didn't care for that for a minute. With that's a it. borrowed minivan. But you know what? Is anything that a minivan offers, you can get with a great General Motors SUV well, just, product. I got nothing against GM. I like GM. Then that's what we should be happy about, and not a minivan. Listen, I've just had. I have life. nothing against minivans. I, I think the Honda Element is a dumbass looking car. I'm not going to disagree with any of your analysis, your psychoanalysis of me. I'm not going to. I'm not going to disagree. But I will tell you yeah. that I have had an inordinate amount of highway incidents with uh, with minivans, just involved with minivans. That, 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 that have you ever looked mean. in the rearview mirror as to as the, who, who the culprit of some of these might be? Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked at those cold steel blue eyes? <laughs> so much to Are you, are you <laughs> insinuating that I may be at fault in some of these? No. Mike, let me reference Smokey Robinson. I'm a careful, aggressive driver. The tears of a clown. <laughs> <laughs> no. When no one's around. You are aggressively safe. Two words for all of my highway buddies. Yeah. Get there. That's all. Yes. Get there. I agree. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Now. Get there, people. So just for the record... Me, Don, no problem with minivans. Mm -hmm. However, off with your head if you're driving that Honda Element. I'm right. serious. Mike's thing is he hates minivans because of his, his marriage thing. <laughs> Rob, I hate he, everything except, well, I hate all foreign cars, of course. <laughs> because right, To get into the, what Rob hates would be... Yeah. But, he's but not German hours. cars. But okay, I hate all <laughs> Japanese cars. Is there the enemy? But Germany is okay. <laughs> And I don't like what? minivans. Germany's okay. All right, we're we're getting it's out. all right. We're really They've getting made reparations. The, we're getting through the crisp outer cookie right now. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Yeah. It might we be are. get out of here. Might be right? best for you to find your way to the back of the room now. I think so. <laughs> Jesus, wow. Yeah, man, I felt like I was watching that old movie in cold blood. <laughs> That's a, an what? onion better left unpeeled. <laughs> How's yeah. that? That's I would like, yeah. like it if I started talking about that. You could do that. No, I couldn't do that. <laughs> but you know, you would make me do that if you I kept know. doing. That stuff know, about what you wow. hate. Wow! Do you that. even do you even have you written something? Do you even know what that means? Yeah. What I just wrote down? Uh, yeah, I think I do. do. You know what it means? Yeah, I think I do. I just, Does it involve people? Yeah. yeah okay, <laughs> I know exactly. What you're doing. <laughs> right. You can't go wrong. I understand. Yes. Anyway, yes. But when he gets going, I know. Yeah. Get him on one of those hate subjects. God. He's frightening. Does he love to hate? <laughs> he is frightening. Are you a good broadcaster, Rob? You're a great broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. God damn, you've learned well. You really have. Don, he's learned and he's taught. Here's <laughs> yeah. Jim. San Francisco he's again. Taken and he's given. Hey, Don and Mike. Hey, Jim. Another KYCY listener. Wow. And also, also, I listen to the rebroadcast at night to catch the full show. That's oh, so very good. Well, see, I didn't know they rebroadcast the show at night. What's the point of that, though? What time do they broadcast it at night? Um, eight o'clock till just before twelve. They they condense it without the commercials. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. All right, thank you, my friend. And and also too, but I, I support the station because it's the only station run by trainables. <laughs> that's very nice. <laughs> Noble. Thank you, my friend. Very good. Trainable, trainables, which is the modern word for retarded. Sure. You know, are, are you trainable? Mm -hmm. Have you tasted the coffee? The coffee <laughs> did, did. Are, you, are you trainable? Are you trainable? Mm -hmm. Are you? Are you? <laughs> uh, oh, Mike. Listen. Uh, when we come back. Um, we almost started doing the fake DJ thing right. with Cindy Lauper, and I'm really glad that we didn't because we have a, a fake DJ thing coming up. Good. Where I get to be uh, Harry Hitler. Uh -huh. And I'm Jeff Zahner. And uh, now, all I'm going to say is I won't give away the setup, but the name of the show today is Isn't That Something? Fantastic. <laughs> The person that we've selected, uh, fresh from today's headlines, as a matter of fact, as mentioned on the Regis and Kelly Lee show today, mm -hmm. uh, this is a woman who's making national headlines. Okay. And the response, I believe, that we will have 
just about everything that she says is... Isn't that something? Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, that's really something. <laughs> that's really something. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that something? <laughs> Isn't that something? Some broad that's got an 83-year-old orange. <laughs> Isn't that something? Wow. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Sacramento, California. Hello. Larry King, I want to uh, commend you on your choice of spinners tonight. Uh... Uh, it is black. I know it. This quality, though. Um, this money that belongs to the Iraqi people, uh, can they get that back from Saddam? And are we going to get Don and Mike on the uh, Armed Forces Radio over and over? Good question. That's a good question. Nick, uh, I'm sorry, Nick. Uh, Christopher, can they get the money some way to, to, to send that money back to the people? He probably took well, it from them. Oh, I'm, so oh, I'm sorry. The Don and Mike Show. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I... Where's the one where Imus is on there? That's a different one. That's a better one. I kept waiting for where he goes. Donald oh, Myers? Donald Myers? Let's take a call. Cape California. Hello. Hi, Larry. Uh, Hi. Don Imus. Uh, how you doing? Thank you. Love your radio show. Uh, can you tell me uh, what happened to Don and Mike in, in uh, New York City? If they're not on live anymore? Are they uh, back on? They were taking off for a while. Are they on or out, out of... Not on the air in New York, Don. Don and Mike? Yeah. You know, I don't know whether they're on or not. Oh. Well, Don and Mike, they're on, they're, on in, they're on in Washington, right? right. Don and Mike. Yeah, I think, I, think they, I think that's where they originated from now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas, hello. Oh. Is it the Don and Mike show? You bet. All right, thank you, dude, Walker. Oh. Let's go to the Harry and Jeff show here. Well, keep in mind, today we'll be playing Name That NFL Player. Right. Here's the thing. There's 32 NFL teams. This guy is a starter for one of the 32 NFL teams. Very, very interesting. You'll have, uh, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes to call in with you. Yes or no questions for him. Right. Uh, to find out who is this NFL player. This is a game for, for really big fans of the NFL. Yeah, well, I think it even, well... I don't want to give anything away. Okay. I think very maybe, good. maybe even a borderline fan All right. might be able to guess. Uh, but first, here's the story uh, that even Regis was talking about today. Wow. Uh, and I keep telling Buzz he's got to watch the Regis show. I should. Only for one reason, because uh, Buzz, like myself, is a fan of anything broadcasting, very anything much so, yeah. TV. And I know you like finding the behind the scenes stuff. Yep. Um, there's a level of uncomfortableness that Regis has uh, that he had with Kathy Lee, mm -hmm. which I, I interpret now as nothing but just pure hatred. Right. <laughs> yeah. And what he has now with, with Kelly Ripa, who at times I've accused of falling into the Kathy Lee Gifford mm -hmm. uh, camp. like the Swimming in Lake Me. For instance, mm -hmm. today when I was watching the show, and, and re leading up to the orange lady that we're going to have here on the show in a second, he, uh, he says... So, what did you do this weekend? Because they had the weekend off. And she starts talking about some Donna Karen party that she get, went to in the Hamptons. <laughs> and right away, he makes no bones about the fact he doesn't care. Right. His body language says, oh, shut up, bitch. He just sits there. <laughs> he, he folds his old man hands with his big, long, Andy Rooney-like fingernails <laughs> and just sits there and waits for her to finish. Now, the difference between, in, in my opinion, the difference between Kelly and, and Kelly Ripa and Kathy Lee Gifford right. is that Kelly Ripa, even though I think she's a little bit taken on herself, mm -hmm. uh, taken with herself, She's funny, and she is a good compliment. Oh, she's much yes, funnier than Kathy. Yeah, she, she That's can, not saying much. She's, she's funny in her own right. She's, she's very good for what she does. So there are times when he's exasperated with her. And, and you know that there's a part of him where he's sitting there and he's looking at her. She's done what Kathy Lee wanted to do. She got on that Regis show. She got her own stupid sitcom. Right. She's now making, if not more, at least the same amount of money sure. as Regis. Yeah. And the show's ratings have gone up. Mm -hmm. So... He has to sit there and listen to all of this stuff where she's talking about going to the Hamptons. Right. And, he, and this is this morning on the Regis show. I love this show. <laughs> so she goes on with this about the celebrities she's met and the, and the things that their kids did. And he goes, all right, fine. <laughs> well, then fine. And then he moves right to this. He says, hey, do you know who Maji Clock is? <laughs> And she, she goes, you know, well, I know my big daddy or Regis. You know, <laughs> well, I know Regis. Well, she's a woman that's got an 83-year-old orange. How about that? <laughs> what do you think of that? Can now, you believe it? That's really something. <laughs> and, he, he says, and I'm thinking, all of a sudden, I know, oh, wait, hold, wait a minute. 
this is a girl that we're going to have on the, a, a girl, a woman we're going to have. An on old show, woman. Right. Oh, hold on, Mike. We have breaking news. I've got to mm -hmm. take this call if this is true. Dave in Vermont. Dave? Dave? Yeah. Hello, Dave. Breaking news from Vermont. Yes, your uh, episode of the Lisa Remedy show is on. The one where Don is, uh, Don's a UPS driver? Yeah, wow. he's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> You're on in syndication. The checks should be rolling in. Yeah. Those checks, those Babylon 5-like checks for $12 each are rolling in. Another great performance. Okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Congratulations, Don. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I would watch King of Queens in our local area tonight to see myself on TV, but unfortunately, no station has picked it up. No, unfortunately, huh. not in syndication, no. That's uh, not here. Not on. It's big in Vermont, though. I get Will and Grace always. Yeah. On my two shows I get, no matter what, what station I turn, Friends or Will and Grace. It's all over. Always. Yes. Always on. So, uh, last, uh, uh, yesterday morning, this morning, I'm watching Regis, and while he's telling Kelly to, okay, that's enough of the Hamptons, right. he just, like, no sophistication, no nothing, just, boom, how about this woman? Yeah. How about the lady with the orange? And she says, what are you talking about? Uh -huh. He says, there's a lady in, in uh, Oklahoma who's had an orange in her family for 83 years, and when she dies, and uh, it'll be hopefully a uh, after we interview her, yeah, uh, she's going to give the orange. Not her, before then, or during. Going to give the orange to her kids uh -huh. because it was a, a present from her father, eighty three years ago. Yes, See, the orange is very hard, and it's uh, leathery, and uh, not not orange colored anymore. Not anymore. I doubt that. And we're we're going to call uh, this eighty year old woman Margie Clark, and it's time for the uh, Harry and Jeff show. Uh, today's episode will be called "Isn't That Something?" Isn't that something? What are we gonna? What the hell are we gonna say to this lady? Beyond isn't that? You know, and now we can tell her that Regis was talking about her today. Right. So uh, Rob, she's giving her okay to go on the air, right? She's waiting for the phone. Right on. Very good. So here we go. Buzz, as soon as we get uh, get through to her, gotcha. I'll ask you to. Uh, I'll tell her I'm a technician or something, mm -hmm. and then you can give us the uh, the lead in with our theme song for the Harry and Jeff show. Mm -hmm. Now remember, she's eighty. Takes a while to get to the phone. Hello. Hello, is this Margie? Uh huh. Margie, uh, stand by to be on the radio with Harry and Jeff. Okay. What? Did uh. Did a boy named Robbie call you today to set up an interview to be on with Harry and Jeff? Yes. Okay. It's time for that show. Are you ready? I guess so. Okay. Stand by. Live from the Westwood One Radio Network, it's the Harry and Jeff Show with your hosts, Harry Hitler and Jeff Dahmer. Now, here's Harry and Jeff. Hey, thanks, folks. Hi, everybody. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer, and this is the Two for the Road Show. Five minutes until the hour, you got to be somewhere in five minutes, you got, oh, just 300, 300 minutes to get there. If you got to be there by the top of the hour at five minutes until, uh, <laughs> you are the mathematician, there's no doubt about that. Uh, listen, I'm Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Thomas. And how many times have you heard something in the news and you've said, <laughs> isn't that something? Well, do we have something for you today. Do we? Say hello, everybody, to Margie Clark. Hi, Hi Margie. Margie. Hello. Margie's from McAllister, Oklahoma. <laughs> she has an orange that is 83 years old. That is really something. Isn't it, Margie? Yes, it is. <laughs> can, can you tell us, ma'am? Um... Correction. I said 300 minutes. I meant 300 seconds. Ah, 300 seconds. 300 minutes would be a much longer period of time. That's right. right. My apologies, everybody. Speaking of time, now four minutes until the hour. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Tummer. I'm, I'm wondering now how many seconds old that orange would be. Because no, I know it's really something. At least 60 since we've had Margie on the phone. Margie, you have an orange that's 83 years old. May I say something to you, ma'am? Ma'am? Yes. May I say something to you about your 83-year-old orange? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's really something. It certainly is. What's it look like? Well, it, right now it weighs about a half ounce, and it's um, about the size of a lemon. That is really something. It, it, Isn't that something? It's Isn't kind that of blackish-brown. Mm. Wow. Isn't that something? Does it smell? Oh, no. No, it's, it's just real hard. And now, you're going to give this to your children? 
Yes, uh-huh. Isn't that something? That is really something. Why are you going to give this to your children? Why? Yes, Margie. Yes. Well, uh, While you're answering that, let me mention... Now, three minutes till the top of the, top of the hour. Captain Dan is back from his accident with the uh, Harry and Jeff uh, helicopter in the eye of the sky. He'll help you get home on this busy afternoon on the highways and byways. It's too, 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 too much on this Tuesday. Hi, everybody. This is Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. We're speaking with Margie Clark, who's got an orange that is actually, I say, three, year, three years old. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? It really is something. Isn't that something? How, Margie, can you ever eat this item? Can you ever eat this orange? Can I ever what? Can you ever eat it, darling? Eat it. Eat it. E-A-C. Can you eat it? E-A-C. Can you eat it? No. no. Isn't, isn't that isn't something? That? <laughs> That's really something. What if you, like, soaked it in water overnight and rehydrated it? Do you think you can perhaps get the water back in it? No, I don't think so. Oh, that is that's, something. That was ever done to the right. orange to cause it to be like this. Why, yes. why is it that your dad, uh, bless you so, gave you an orange 83 years ago? Margie? His, uh, his sister gave it to him on Christmas Eve night. Wow, so that's 19 something. 1921. 1921, that is one seriously old orange, that's isn't it? That's really something. My goodness. That's something. And, Say, uh, do you know that... It, uh, it never did decay or uh, mildew or anything. It, hmm. it just began to turn dark. And Isn't dark. that something? Isn't that something? Do so you have any other old fruit? No. <laughs> I've never heard of anything like this before. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Say, I, you know, I was, I was watching uh, television today. I'll tell you something, that I heard Regis Philbin mention your name on his television show today. Isn't that something? That is really something. Did you know that Regis mentioned you? No, I didn't. Yes, yeah, Regis mentioned you on the show. That is one old piece of fruit. Isn't that something? Regis Philbin? Yes. yes, Regis Philbin. You know, he's got that show, Regis and Kathy Lee. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Would you be impressed if I was to tell you, this is Harry Hitler speaking now. Hi, everybody. It's nearly the top of the hour. I'm Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Donner. How are you, anyway? But it amazes you to not stand by for Jerry Todd. Yeah. Jerry Todd will be coming up with uh, some great video soundtracks. Turning Japanese. Japanese. Uh, would it uh, amaze you if I was to tell you that I might be able to get Regis Philbin on the telephone right now here on the Harry and Jeff Isn't That Something show? Uh, isn't that something, Margie? Yes, it is. Yeah, let's right, see if hold we can on, do that right I'll now. I'll dial it up. I need, uh, you see the number here? I need the other one. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm on this one. Very exciting if we can uh, uh, let me try to do that. Oh, I'll tell you right now, it's uh, top of the hour. It's 5 o'clock on the east, 2 o'clock on the west. Of course, in Austin, it's yesterday, Dallas, it's last night. I'm Harry Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. All this talk about oranges wants me to remind you that it's not, of course, anytime soon. But coming up later in the fall, we will have the fabulous Orange Juice Tacular that will be uh, taking place early in the morning, followed by the fabulous Ardinger Pancake Breakfast. Our show isn't that something. Yes. And today, Margie Clark... Uh, Margie, you have an 83-year-old orange? Yes. Isn't yes. that something? And does it taste good? I'm going to try to call Regis Philbin right now. All right, we're going to get Regis on the line. How about that, Margie? Hey. All right, let's do that right now. Very, very exciting. Regis Philbin, star of uh, the Regis Show and uh, and that wonderful show. Who wants to be a, a billionaire? Sometimes a, a uh, correspondent of the uh, Harry and Jeff Show... Well very, very exciting as we're dialing up Regis right now. See if we get on the show. He's a part-time regular on the program. We uh, like to have uh, Regis on quite often. Very, very exciting. This is super as we're talking to Margie Clark. Uh, oh. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's really something. It truly is. Now a minute after the hour. Weed Wars tonight with Joe Ardinger here on Westwood One. Weed <laughs> Wars. Uh, dialing up Regis' hold up right now. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Is this Regis Philbin? Who's this? This is Harry Hitler from the Harry and Jeff Show. Oh, it's the fabulous uh, Harry, uh, Harry and Jeff Show. Hi. Well, how are you, boys? Uh, Regis, uh, guess who's on the phone with us? I have no idea. You've caught me uh, by surprise. I was just stepping out of the shower. <laughs> it's Margie Clark. Oh, the lady with the orange? Isn't 
that something? That is uh, really uh, something. Uh, how are you? Do you have uh, do you do you have the uh, the uh, lady on the phone with her uh, with you right now? Uh, she's there. Margie, would you say hi to Regis Philbin? Hello, Mr. Philbin. How, how are you, Margie? I'm fine, thank you. That's, that's quite an orange. Yes, it's I isn't understand. that something? That's that's uh, that's an orange. That's an orange that's 83 years old. I believe that's. Two billion six hundred seventeen million four hundred and eighty-eight thousand seconds old. <laughs> Isn't that really something? <laughs> why don't you uh, Why don't you bring the orange by the show sometime? Now, Regis, yeah, I don't want you stealing our guests. We've oh, got, that's right. We've got uh, Margie exclusively here. Oh, Let me just say, I don't know what happened to Jeff. He stepped out of the room for a moment. I'll step up. It's H H with H H. That's happy. a really old fruit. <laughs> it's a happy it hour. Reminds me of Rip Taylor. Happy hour. <laughs> How are you? Anyway? Anyway. Happy hour with Harry Hitler. How are you, boys? Three minutes after the hour, whatever you're doing, I hope it ends tonight. Where's Jeff Dama? With, well, according to Jim. How's everything going? On ABC. Hello? <laughs> That's really something. That's great. How are you, Margie? I'm fine. This you're... is Regis Philbin. <laughs> Glock on the wall says, we're about out of time for this episode. How are you? This is Harry Hitler. Oh. Poor Jeff Murray, Harry Hitler. Hello. I want to say until next time. I want to thank you for your time. And remember, hey our Harry, time, go eat one. Our time together is so valuable. We're in time. Three minutes after five. Thank you for oh, your time. Shove it. Until our time is up. The next time we talk to each other, Hello. it's been heavy <laughs> on the show. Hello. It's something when you have a I'm new, dying. an 83 year old orange. Hello. Regis, Regis Philbin, thank you for being on the phone. What, are you hanging up on me? Yes, we are, just like Dave Letterman. Hey, God damn it! Oh. And Margie? Yes. Let me, let me say to you. Hey, how are you, Margie? <laughs> That's let great. Me, let me say. In the s summary about your 83-year-old orange, that's really something. That is really something. We sure appreciate you being on the show, Margie. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. You too. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. right. then. May I ask you if you've enjoyed your time with Harry and Jeff on... Yes, isn't, I sure have. Isn't that something? That's really something. Isn't that something? Okay. Aren't you, aren't you super? Hello? Hey, Buzz, do we have a parting gift? That's do you right. have a sponsorship? <laughs> have I put you on the spot? Margie wins a juicer. <laughs> Margie, congratulations. We're giving you some type of a juicer. Yes, you should be getting it soon. Thanks, Margie. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your time on the show. Thanks for being on. Goodbye I'm anyway. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Hitler. And I'm Jeff Dahmer. And a doing time. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Kill the announcer. Thanks for joining us for Harry and Jeff's Isn't That Something with your hosts, Harry Hitler and Jeff Dahmer. Join us next time for the Harry and Jeff Show on the Westwood One Radio Network. And are you still there, my, my dear? Uh-huh. Oh, she is. Hold, hold on. How are you anyway? <laughs> hold on just a moment. Wasn't that something? <laughs> okay. Rob, don't be exceptionally cruel with her. She seemed like a pleasant... She was a very sweet very lady. nice lady. Margie. Thank juicer. you so much for joining them. I hope you had a good time. Um, we haven't any juicers, but if you hang on and get your address, we will send you. Some. I will send her a juicer. <laughs> Put Buzz on the spot. I have expected you to do juice. I really expected. What do we have for her? Um, uh, George Eads. <laughs> Georgia Fox. Whatever the name of those CSI people last I think you can guess it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Buzz. You're welcome. Uh, Rob, what did she say? Is she okay? No, she's fine. She's looking forward to getting something. There you go. Isn't that something? Maybe some chicken. Uh, now, we got enough time for some phone uh, phone scan action here before we uh, play Who Is That NFL Player? That's fantastic. So call, call right now. <laughs> You want to call because anybody can call our show. Absolutely. These calls are on screen. 877 365 3636. Wow. Your calls are the rotating random phone scan. Live straight ahead. Call now. This is the Don and Mike Show. Okay, I get it. You're joking. Well, I've got a sense of humor. I laugh at Tony Danza. Of course, if you aren't joking, I feel bad and I apologize. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. Tony Danza. All right, that's it. The Don and Mike Show. Broadcasting live from downtown Dumbass.
The Don and Mike Show. Right, right. Every day in Spokane, Washington. KJRB. Also known as KFAN. Uh, Worcester, Mass. WORC. Johnstown, Pennsylvania. WWGE. And Harrisonburg, Virginia. 95.5. WZXI. And oh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, that starts in uh, something like Monday oh. on uh, whatever it is, WQSC. Very good. Charleston, South Carolina, more stations of the Hammond Egg uh, Network now. Phone scan time. All right. We will be playing Name That NFL Player later in today's show. Secret Sound, we had a loser today, so it's $1,300 tomorrow. Uh, Cindy Lauper's out of her mind. <laughs> she was on the show earlier today. She was a lot of fun. Yeah. And if you remember yesterday, we had the Singing Senators CD. Right. Remember that guy? His, yeah. His awful CD. Sure. We booked him as a guest on Thursday. Wonderful. Yeah. United States uh, the Singing Senator Charlie Albertson. State Senator from North Carolina or South? South Carolina. North Carolina. All right. Down in Raleigh. And now, phone scan. Uh, these are on-screen calls. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Yes, you happen to be on the air. As I said, these are unscreened telephone calls. I hear rustling. And I hear fidgeting with the phone. Hello, Don and Mike Show. You boys just ain't got the right minivan. We what? Get you, you ain't got the right minivan. We ain't got you the right minivan. These minivans are slow. Now, listen, this is Mike's issue, uh, largely uh, because of his personal situation. <laughs> you, get, you get you one of them turbo caravans with that five speed like I got? Yeah. You, you ain't keeping up with me on the turnpike, son, I tell you that. Okay, now, are you doing a fake voice, or is this how you really speak? Well... Sometimes I'm a little exaggerated when I get upset. Okay. Yeah. But I'll, I. Well, I'm upset that you're driving that car. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello, phone scan. Hello? Hello. Yeah, you're on the air. Okay. Hey, I just want to actually say that uh, Michael Mayer is probably the, the smartest guy in this world for thinking that minivans are beats to crap. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Because I'm from, I'm from Wichita, Kansas, and Wichita, Kansas has the worst drivers in this country, and they all go 60 miles an hour with some little old lady that can't see over the steering wheel under 1982 Dodge minivan. <laughs> all right, my friend. Oh, I'm filled with great joy. How many times have you been? To, how many times have you been divorced? <laughs> actually, actually, I've got a five-year girlfriend that lives uh, two states away, so I've got the perfect situation right Atta now. boy, oh. my man. There you go. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Phone scan. Hello. Don and Mike, how are yeah. you? I used to listen to you in Philly. Now I'm down in Ocean City. First, I'd like to say, F. Tim Sabian. Secondly, oh, he's so, Lisa. He's so much in our rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa's one of the many people that slips into that uh, abyss when they leave the show. That's right. Okay, then I won't ask again. Thank you, sir. You got it. See you later. See ya. Bye bye. Yeah, you know people change on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to have new people every once in a while. It happens. Which is why I don't. There's not a polite way of saying this, but Beth Ann, you're fired. <laughs> we've, we've decided that we're going to make another switch. Yes, yes. Just to keep the show fresh. Just to keep it fresh, as fresh as uh, as an orange. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, I've got some beef with you fellas. Isn't that something? Isn't Mike? That, yes, <laughs> really. Is something. Yeah. Okay. What's your what? What's your beef? Well, I called up yesterday with plans to sing Rob Lullaby, then you cut me off. Yeah, right. I remember you. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello there. Hey, Don and Mike. How are you? Hey, we're doing great. Thank you. I have a question for you. You're probably going to think it's pretty dumb. I but bet we do. Go ahead. <laughs> what do you call letters for a radio station? Like, do they stand for something? Or No, no, they don't stand. Something, it, back in the day, like, for instance, our station in Wichita, KFH, mm -hmm. stood for Kansas's Finest Hotel. Right. WLS, a station I worked at in Chicago, stood for World's largest store. Mm -hmm. Or James L. Albritton. Like yeah. WJLA. Yeah. Right, where, uh, nice. where a guy will name a radio station or a TV station and after himself. And in huge markets like New York City, you would have WCBS, WNBC, you know, right. standing, maybe the uh, network flagship. But generally, they, they don't mean a thing anymore. W okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Thank bye -bye. you. Yeah, bye bye. There used to be a station here in D.C., right. an, easy an easy listening station called WGAY. And I can't tell you how many times, yeah. when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. They're like 10 years old. My mom and dad, we'd, we'd drive down to Silver Spring, and you'd go past that building, and my brother and I'd be in the back seat of the car, just start laughing because it says WGAY. Hold yeah. on. Here's the hotline. This is the inside number. Hello? I just had to, I, I had to dump that out. Hold on a second, please. Yes. 
true. I, I hope that didn't get on the air. I that, think we dumped it. That would give out the identity it. of our uh, of our NFL player. I believe you're set. Well, and now Mike knows who it is. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to cancel the bid. <laughs> no. um, that was just somebody calling it out. Now, I don't know how we did on the delay. If that got through on the All delay... Right. Yeah. No, I don't think so. None of it did. I don't think we. We. I don't think we even have to discuss it. I think you're fine. Okay. Hello, Donna Mike. But anybody that was on hold, mm -hmm. uh, even those, are, even though these are unscreened calls, sometimes they're just put on hold and said, mm -hmm. just shut up and wait for them to come to you. I'll try to cover for it though. They I had no idea it was her. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. So maybe somebody on hold had her. Right. Were you on hold? Hello. Yes, I was. Did you hear the name of the football player? No, I didn't. That's ah, very good. good. So what can we do for you? Uh, good, good day to you, gentlemen. And, and good day to you, sir. Just Canada checking in. Right. Yes, wonderful. Here. Okay, what can we do for you? Just wanted to thank the radio gods for WBUF for bringing you guys to us up here. Right on. WBUF is one of our uh, best affiliates. Mm -hmm. 92.9 in Buffalo. Goes all the way to Canada. Great station. Thanks, okay. Right. gentlemen. All right, see you later. Yeah. All right. Bye bye, loser. <laughs> and hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, radio god. Hi. Oh, by the way, before I said what I wanted to tell you, uh, Home of the Kings is KHTK. <laughs> so that'll make you happy. <laughs> okay, uh, gotcha. Uh, All gonna, right. It's been, a couple, it's been a couple months ago you mentioned about Mercedes the Cambridge dying. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. And uh, I, I told Joe, I don't know if he ever told you, but I couldn't believe you didn't know that she played on Batman. Who, was she, who was she on Batman? She, she was the uh, Black Widow. Oh, he's, you know, see, he, yeah, you know what, you're right, you got me that way. You, you stumped me, but Black Widow was one of those, like, the third season when Batman really, when all they did was just film Batman right. Right. In, inside, like, a room. Yeah. They had no real sets. It was like Star Trek. It was all just... Uh, Drapes, cardboard. They would walk into a room and there would be. You mean like, they went on the cheap the last, yeah. the third season. Yeah, you would walk into a room and there'd be a shower curtain, and that was supposed to be like the Joker's hideout, <laughs> like Londinium Fog. Like with who? I'm sorry. Was it Lon Londinium Fog? Was another one of their lame characters they Lond had? Like yeah. Londinium Fog. No, this, yeah. You know, this guy's absolutely right. Wow. It was Colonel Fog who lived in Londinium. Okay. Oh. And, Thanks, and, Rob. And uh, maybe the worst uh, villain of all on Batman was Louis the Lilac, oh. played, played by Milton Berle. Oh, that's right, Louis the Lilac. I put him up against Bookworm any day. <laughs> uh, now, Bookworm was a quality Batman video. He played Bookworm, a, villain. A quality Batman video of a villain. Right? Roddy McDowell. Vareal. Roddy McDowell was bookworm? Yes, yes, he was. Vareal. Got Vareal. 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 Got Vareal. Vareal. Anyway. Yeah, bookworm was a great A guy. Wasn't Batman a show where towards the end, like, it, it was, it was, uh, Kind of a kitschy, campy thing for all celebrities to be on that show? No, in the, in the very beginning, uh, oh, Batman was so hot. But the first two years, right, dying to get on the show. Okay. The third year, they had a hard time getting celebrities. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. okay. on the show. And the third year is when they junked it up with Batgirl. Was the third year the last year? Yes, it was. Oh, I didn't know it only had a three-year run. Although, I think uh, Adam West said this when we had him on the show. Uh, I know that it was in his book uh, that NBC decided that they would uh, pull Batman and, and put it on their schedule, but ABC had already torn down the Batcave. Oh. And it would, it would have been too expensive to rebuild the Bat Cave, so that's why Batman got killed. An American tragedy. Was it the third season that they went from twice a week to once a week? Yeah, because when they were on twice a week, that yeah. kicked ass. And that was like 1967, 68. I mean, I was eight, nine years old. Man, would I live for Tuesday night. No, hold on. <laughs> you know, I'm all choked up. Whatever I give me, Whatever I give me, <laughs> Whenever I get emotional, I just I know. Get all, I get all and you get up. emotional about Batman. I do, because I loved it. I loved Batman the first time I saw it. And I remember my dad, what it just what, what a jerk my dad was <laughs> in so many ways. But, like, listen to this. Now, this is 1966. Mm -hmm. This is before you've got 8,000 channels, mm -hmm. and you've got everything available on video and, and right. streaming audio. Mm -hmm. and, and It's nothing. You've got three TV channels. We didn't even have a goddamn color TV. Right. You will remember, I am not lying about this, my dad went out and bought a plastic strip that had one quarter yellow, one quarter blue, one quarter... Yeah, they quarter stole those to make the TV mm -hmm. color. To make mm -hmm. it a color TV. We didn't even have a color TV. There's only one show I liked. It was Batman. It was on Tuesday night, and it was on Wednesday night at 7.30, and I thought it was the coolest. And that jerk 
sat down with me and watched the first episode and decided it was too violent oh, for no. me to watch. Oh, oh no. So I would have that. That's when my long string of lying to my parents really began. Mm -hmm. And was Batman, correct me if I'm wrong, was Batman on uh, during the same time frame as like. The uh, Hogan's Heroes uh, was that at the same mm, the I, Wild H Wild West Hogan's Heroes and that, uh, after Batman. Okay, and Batman was like sixty six mm -hmm. to sixty nine, and I, I remember that is where, and maybe that's why to this day I only have one tattoo on my body. The yeah, Batman, it's, it's the the Batman thing on my on my on my right. Buzz uh, called it a Batu. A Batu on yeah. my uh, on my right shoulder because that's where that's the first time I can remember in my life that I dug my heels in with my old man mm -hmm. right and said. This is not a bad show, right. and I will lie to you and tell you that I'm not going to watch it, but I'm going to go to whatever his name's house up the street and watch sure, it. Sure, in color. Mm -hmm. If you don't, yeah, and I didn't even bring up the color TV no, thing. Source didn't point. even bring it up. I wanted it in color. You know, I'm thinking you might, yeah, but you, you complain about not having color TV, and I'm thinking maybe now that, uh, now that I'm thinking about the years that you're talking about, yeah. I am thinking that I, I maybe got color TV later than you did. Impossible because we got it after the Jets won the Super Bowl. Ah, that's the that's the one I was going to say. So you got it after that fact. We watched. We did too, though. We did too. I remember going to the neighbor's house to watch that particular so Super Bowl mm -hmm. at the McCabe's house. So do I. I'll tell you the first Super Bowl that I saw in color at my parents' home, where Jim O'Brien kicked the winning field goal. Uh, the Colts beat the Cowboys. Right. I have no idea if that was like number five or number six. That is the first Super Bowl that we watched in my house with a real color TV. And when we got a color TV, it was a Toshiba color TV wow. way back when. And I mean, that's how old that brand is. Support the enemy, Mike. <laughs> and we got it. And I came home from school, and the Mike Douglas show was on. And the first thing I remember seeing ever on a color television set in my house was a red crystal drum set. And I remember because it just jumped out at me. It was about the coolest thing in the world. I swear to God, I remember my dad coming in with that piece of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that product because they sold it on black and white. Set. You don't need color TV. This will turn any black and white set into a color set. Piece of plastic. God, you won't let me watch the one show I want to watch. Yeah. Is it any wonder? That I turned out the way I turned. No Not wonder I jumped up on the roof in my Batman costume you know, and, and broke my man. arm. Mm -hmm. No wonder I. Were you ever able to sneak it after that? After he forbid you to watch it, or you know, uh, what, what happened was I dug my feet and I said, "If you don't let me watch it, I'm going to go to to Jimmy's house or, or, or Johnny's house." And right. finally, he just decided it wasn't that important. He either let you go to the house or turn it on or <laughs> lock you under the stairs. He thought it was a phase. And look, hey, who's laughing now, old man? Huh? <laughs> who's laughing now, Sam? Here I am. Look at me. I'm almost 46 freaking years old. On Saturday, I will have been married 23 years. And I'll tell you what. I still love Batman. I still love Spider-Man. I'm still a disc jockey. Go to hell, you piece of crap. <laughs> On a big jerk face. Oh, you needed to vent that, didn't you? He can hear us now. He can hear us now. Now that we're back on in Tampa Bay. Oh, really? I think. If he's alive. Mm -hmm. Don't even know. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I think this caller is exhausted. Now. Hi there. Sorry about Maybe that. Over I, just, I just pulled a Cindy Lauper on you. My apology. You were venting. Yeah. It was. It was yeah. 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 I sideswiped you. Yeah. I, I poke you in the eye. <laughs> anyway. First of all, yeah, you're back on Tampa Bay. Tell them, go to hell. You like what you like. You are who you are. You do whatever the hell Don wants. To yeah. Do. That's right. Amen. What can we Secondly, do for you? I think I heard the name. Oh, you heard the... Oh, were you on hold? I believe I did. All right, hold on just a second. I could be wrong. All right, hold on a second. Donald, Donald, Donald has to be killed. See if, uh, is. Yes, uh, he will have to be destroyed. On hold? We, uh, we don't do this very often, but we do when we need to. He, we may have to put the listener down. When you I, have you to. are going to have to. I don't have the handset. You're going to have to lean over and pick up line okay. number eight. Now, did you hear the name of the football player? Yes, I did. All right, mm -hmm. go to it's Mike on the big green phone there. Pick up line number eight, the line that's on hold. Here we go. Hi, this is Mike Romero. Oh, hold on. Let me get you on mic. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, I uh, I don't believe that was the football player, but uh, I'll find out in just a second. Why don't you have a good day? <laughs> okay, take care. Who did he write down? Or who did he say? Who did you write? Who did he say? Who you write it down? Who did he say? He said... Oh well, yeah, no, he's not the guy, but that's that's close. Um, ah. Yeah, listen, hey, dude, 
I think he might be gone. Hey, do, oh, he's he's gone. Yeah. Anyway, no, he was not the guy, but it was close. Thanks for calling. Anyway, hello, Don and Mike show. It, let me tell everybody, it was not Norm Sneed. No, it was not Roman Gabriel. Not Norm Sneed. It was not Y A Tittle. It wasn't. It was. It was Homer Jones. And look, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hi, it's Buzz there. Yes. Well, yes. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Buzz. Hi. I love you. Well, I love you, ma'am. What's your name? Bye. 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 Her, her name is Bye. Bye bye. So often they don't leave their names. No, they don't. What was her name? It was a man, I think. <laughs> it was a man. <laughs> Don, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. Hey. Hey, is Buzz there? <laughs> yes, I'm, 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 here. I'm here, sir. Hey, Buzz. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. What's your name? If I hung up on him, Buzz, oh. get a little out of hand. Those oh, calls okay. go both ways. Hello. <laughs> As does Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Elston is Buzz Burbank. Mm -hmm. So Hello. often they don't leave their names. Don and Mike show. Hello. I look like I've been in a fire because I have a hair lip like Joaquin Phoenix. All Thanks right. so much for Thanks. sharing Thanks. that. Hi, Don and Mike show. Phone scan. Hey, Don? Yes. Yes, yeah, your dad calling. You always were a little baby, and you're still a little baby. A 46-year-old little baby. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Did they get the car? He sounded Bye -bye. so young. No, I'm not going to answer that phone that's ringing this time. I bet Dan has already got it. Because that's the one that makes the light go on, and I bet that's the NFL guy. But we got a second here, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, the NFL guy pretty eager? Yeah, I believe so. Hello, Don and Mike show. Uh, Don and Mike? Yes, phone scan. Hi. Hi. Uh, Frida is a very lucky woman. Tell oh. me about it, honey. Yeah, why don't, you send her, why don't you send her a telegram and tell her that? Well, if you guys are ever interested in breaking up again, I can give you my phone number. Oh, honey, breaking up again. I mean, we, we, we separated briefly when we first got married. I've, I've, been, I've been with her for 23 years. I could never, ever dream of... Tell me something. Who's the celebrity most uh, resemble? <laughs> well, um... Probably an uglier Dennis Franz. Yeah. Hey. Oh, she's kidding, of course. Right. So. Are you wearing a big flowing robe-like <laughs> gown right now? I'll do anything for you. Really? Who is yeah. the celebrity seriously you most resemble? I'll tell you that uh, I was recently told, well, you heard, one of my wife's friends told her that she thinks I look like Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> Very uh, handsome Dustin Hoffman. Absolutely. Who is it that you think you look like? Because I understand, um, I, I'm not Kim used, Delaney. Kim Delaney. See, I'm not like Ooh, Buzz. I'm, wow. not, I'm not used to getting calls from women who say that there's Hi, anything, Buzz. anything good about me at all. I so know. she says she looks like Kim Delaney, who's a very fetching woman who was right. on NYPD yes, Blue and yes. also CSI. Very and, attractive and then woman. Was fired, and I believe. I'm in a, I'm in the Bay Area. And oh. you're in the Bay Area. Are you listening That's on our me. San Francisco affiliate? I am, and I wanted to add that you're also on Saturday Ooh. between 3 and 7 p.m., so you're on twice every weekday Enough and that. once on Saturday. What is it? I'd like to just hear it from a woman, uh, since I don't generally hear it from the woman I, I love and I live with. What is it that you love about me so? I mean, there are so many things. List the ways. Yes. List the ways in which you love me. How do you love me? Let me count the ways. Prioritize. I think you're very modest about the way you look. Ah, uh, you're right there. I'm, I'm exceedingly handsome. Stop right there. You, you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm, that's it. Nothing more need be said. Pep talk. And over. I love, I love your taste in popcorn. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's goodness. important. Baby, baby. Leave your number with Bethany. Would you eat Don's popcorn? Um, uh, sure. If he'll put butter on it. I think that can be arranged. I, yeah, that's a personal question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sure thank you is. for the call. Thank you. Thank you. Are you retarded? I love you. I, I love you. Are you retarded? Always. Always. Our right. good answer. Bye -bye. Thank wow. you. Love you. Now guys. you'd eat her popcorn. Yeah. Mm. You know, she mentioned how lucky Frida is. You know, Carrie's lucky too. Why? Yeah. She's a fast healer. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Hello there, Don and Mike show phone scan. The callers want to hear from Joe's mom. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, Mrs. Ardinger, you shouldn't be calling during regular business hours. Hello. Hello there, Don and Mike show. Hello. Don and Mike. Hi. I'd like to trade my spouse in for an 83-year-old orange. <laughs> that's somebody that's obviously in a loving relationship. Hello there. Send you a juicer. Don and Mike show. Hello, phone scan. Hello. Oh. We've done run out of music. What's your name, my friend? Yeah, you. Hello. Hello? Yeah, um, yeah, you. What's your name, sir? Oh, my name's Jim. Uh, Jim, hold on a second. But you know what? I've got a, a large pair of walnuts 
that are 51 years old. Okay, I know where you're going with this, but you're the last person on the phone scan, so hold on and listen to this man. Are you retarded? Right. Okay, listen, listen to him again. Are you retarded? Yes. <laughs> yes. Everybody, everybody affirms it. Um, are you retarded? Yes, I am. It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? Oh, if it's rhetorical, I'm not answering. A retarded person can make a cup of coffee. Am I right, Tom? Oh, I, I don't, I don't really know much about the limitations of the handicap. I know an employment agency that hires out retarded people for four dollars an hour. <laughs> so, if making a cup of coffee is too difficult a task for you, Miss Bennett, perhaps you'd be good enough to let me know, and I'll contact this agency and give a retarded person a job. <laughs> so, um, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you retarded? <laughs> yes. Listen, what's your name? Jim. Jim, you are the last person on the phone scan. What did you call to say? Uh, I have a pair of 51-year-old walnuts. Okay, all right, I heard you. <laughs> heard you the first time. Let it go. Are you retarded? You have got the Starsky and Hutch DVD for being the last person on the phone scan. Starring Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. Starsky and Hutch now on DVD and video. Nice phone. Always Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you retarded? Thank you for listening. Yes, I am. <laughs> you got the timing there, though. I guess you are. That's not a rhetorical Jim. question. Are you retarded? Okay. <laughs> Listen, now it's time. Are you retarded? <laughs> okay, stop it with that thing. Stop it. It's time for this thing. It's, it's time to play. Name that NFL player. Yeah. Here's how you play. Call 877-365-3636. We'll have a current starting NFL player okay. on the telephone from training camp. Very exciting. You will have 20 questions, 20 calls. Yes or no questions. For instance, one of the first questions I would ask, are you in the NFC or the AFC? Yeah. Are you on offense or defense? Are you a starter? Yeah. Did you make the Pro Bowl? You can skip a step by going right to... Will you accept the question, what team do you play for? No, it yes, has no to be a yes, yes or, or no. no ah, question. there you go. Hey, that's a good way to do it. But now there's... Listen, I'll just give you a hint. This would be a quite good question to at least eliminate some of the teams. Mm -hmm. Do you work in a city? Is your team in a city where the Don and Mike show is currently broadcast? Very good. So we broadcast to about 12 or 13 NFL cities. That's good. And this guy may or may not be from one of those cities. Anyway, you figure out who the guy is. Okay. And you win uh, fabulous stuff. So call 877-365-3636. We'll come right back from the break and play Who is that NFL player? Is the Don and Mike show. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just want you to be happy, Mary. But I'd be happiest with you. What about... Brett Favre? What about him? What did I tell you the first time we met? Oh, you're a Niners fan. I'm a Niners fan. The Don and Mike Show. Oh, my God. It's Don and Mike. All right, stand by now at 877-365-3636. We have the NFL player on the line. And we're going to do like that uh, thing they do with the mobsters on 60 Minutes. Right, disguise the voice? His voice will be disguised. Let me turn off Blondie and turn on our game show music. It's time to play Guess That NFL Player. This is a starting player in the NFL. Sure is. Let's welcome him to the show now. Uh, I pull him up on yeah, this pod right. right here. Hello, are, can you hear me? <laughs> Mystery NFL player on the line right now. And how are you today? I'm very happy. Rob, Robert, make, make, it a, make it a little more, a, a little more <laughs> listenable. We're, we're working on our uh, voice scrambler. Hello. Okay. Is that, is that better? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, mystery player. That's good. All right, now we have disguised the NFL mystery player's voice. Now, we will give our listeners 20 questions, yes or no questions, to see if you can crack his secret identity. Does each listener get a question? Yes, they do. Okay. And are we ready? Let's start. Let's go to uh, Bill. Hello, Bill. Ask your, yeah. ask your one question of this NFL starter. Are you an NFC player? No. The answer is no. Would you like to guess, Bill? Sure. 
Go ahead. Uh, Todd Heap. Todd Heap? <clears throat> Negative from your Baltimore Ravens. Hello, uh, Don and Mike show. Hey, how are you? Hi, who's this? This is John from Baltimore. Okay, go ahead. Ask this. Uh, ask our NFL guy. It's his second question. I'm going to ask, do you play for the Redskins? No. No. No, he does not. Do you want to guess very quickly? Uh, um... Ah, oh, forget it. You'll never get it. Yeah, and besides, we've already, you know, if you're paying attention, you had to pay attention to the answers here because you you wouldn't have needed to ask that question. Hold on. What was that football player? Did you say something? Oh, I was agreeing with him. You know, Redskins are NFC. Right. Yeah, see, I mean, the Redskins are NFC. We've already established the so AFC stupid. team. It's so stupid having him on this thing. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> hello. Mike. Sounds great. Mike in Salt Lake City. Mike, question number three. Hey, Mike, you're killing me here. Are you there? Mike. Okay, you're killing me. What, are you retarded? Get that tape ready, Rob. Okay. <laughs> that tape ready. Hello, here's Brad. Brad. Yes. Go ahead. Are you a uh, starting player on an AFC team? Yes. Yes, he is. Now, that has already been information God, that has been people, given out. Please pay yeah. attention. Question four. What was that, a player? No, I don't think so. No. I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> this is like listening to one of those guys in Atlantic City with a voice box. <laughs> but they're normally lower. Yes. You know, turn a little the, higher. Rob, just turn the thing off. I'll, we'll just go with the guy's regular voice. Ooh. Maybe he can disguise his voice. Oh, would you stop? Ah. Rob? Rob, always making it harder for the listeners. Disguising the voice. Okay. <laughs> can you hear us now? Yeah. Oh, are you there? Yes. Okay, oh, so I there's... There, oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, Joe, hi, you're on the air. Don and Mike hey. show. Guess that NFL player. Go ahead. Did you participate in the Super Bowl last year? No. Got a guess, Joe? Warren Sapp. <laughs> right. No. Right. <laughs> then that would be an NFC player. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Correct. Hello, uh, Milton. Yes. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Guess the NFL player. All right. Uh, you have a question? You, Come on, Milton. Yes. You play in the northern eastern part of the States. Hey, Milton? Audrey. Are you retarded? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, yes, he plays in the east, in the eastern right, part uh, of the United States. Do you have a guess? Have a guess? Audrey. Kyle Bo Are you retarded? Who's your guess? Kyle Boulder. Kyle? No, it's not. Hello, Don and Mike show. Peter, Buffalo, New York. Yes, are you in the AFC East? Yes. Yes, he is. Do you have a guess? Um, no, not at this point. Of course not. <laughs> How many how many calls have we taken, Mike? I, I haven't counted the calls. Have oh, you counted the calls, Buzz? I was, about counting, five. I was five. counting. It seems like We've ten. had so many blown calls here that I haven't been able to keep track. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Don and Mike show. Name this NFL player. What's your question? Uh, do you play special teams? Yes. Oh. Do you have a guess? No, I did, but now the answer is yes, I don't. Ah. <laughs> ah. Surprise. Thank you, my friend. Uh, hello, Jamie. Hey, Don and Mike. Jamie, hi. Uh, see if you can guess who this guy is. Well, a quick question first. Did, have, did the gentleman recently uh, jump out of football due to a uh, drug intervention? <laughs> no. No, but he knows who he's not, not Ricky Williams. Yeah. Not Ricky Williams. Yeah. Again, it's not, not Ricky Williams. It's not Warren Sapp. <laughs> I, I was going to guess Peyton Manning, but he's a special teams player, so I don't have no. All care. right, you're yeah. out. Okay, yeah. see you later. Bye bye. Hello, Don. Don and Mike show. Don in California. Hey. Don. Hey guys, uh, my question is: uh, Do you play offense? Uh, no. It's no. already it's already been established, though, what he does. Someone, I believe. Well, can't you do special teams and? Yeah, you could. I yeah. guess you could. Mm. I, I guess you could. Here's uh, Doug in Tampa Bay. Doug. Yeah. Hi, go ahead. Hey, I have a question. Of course. Uh, have you ever played in a Super Bowl? No. No. Do you have a guess? Yes. Um, is it uh, John Lynch? I have no idea. John Lynch? No. no. Formerly of Tampa Bay, now with Denver. Thank you, though. We'll take three more calls, and we'll just tell you who this guy is. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, Gil, Don and Mike show. Gil. Hello, Gil. Are you there? Audrey, are you retarded? Gil, he is retarded. Uh, here is uh, Mike in California. Mike. Yes, do you play uh, for the Raiders? No. no. We already said AFC mm -hmm. East. One more, one more person gets a chance. Here's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, do you play for the New York Jets? No. No, I tell you what, I'm sick of this. Wow. Yeah, I am too. I'm sick of this. That was fun. Uh, oh, shut up, Buzz. <laughs> <Get him first. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from your Buffalo Bills, Ryan Lindell. Ryan... Ryan Lindell. Ryan Lindell. Ryan, 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 Lindell. Ryan Lindell is the field goal yeah. kicker for your Buffalo Bills. So technically, he is a starting player. Yes, that's correct. In the National Football League. And he's League. also in its special teams. And, and that's what... But, you know, we had so many people that were guessing all over the lot after we established the AFC, then the AFC East, and then people would say, Warren Sapp... John Lynch, which is okay, because John Lynch is... Confused. He's confused a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky Williams. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan, listen, I'm sorry there. Oh, no sure winner. glad we disguised your voice at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no winner on Guess Who You Are today. We are glad to talk to you. Um, in training camp with the Bills, you're a kicker. What, yeah. what, do, you, what do you do, dude, while, while those guys are doing the stuff that they do? I mean, the, you know, the players... What do you yeah, what do you do? We uh we kinda make stuff up half the time. <laughs> Just kinda make do our own special little drills to try to save our legs or we might come in and hit the ice tub and and uh you know, 'cause yeah, like you said, you only kick for half an hour or so and but the rest of the team's out there for for it's, both practicing like, on the day at four or five, so it's yeah. We just take a knee half the time, try to figure out who everybody is. Go in, uh, hop in the whirlpool, have a mai tai. You know why not, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Do the do, do the other guys uh, treat you in a less than masculine fan, uh, a ma a fashion manner? Do, you know, do they goof on you because you're a kicker and you're not out there doing that? You know, I've seen that tape with Bill Parcells saying, you know, this is why you lift those weights in the off season. Right. This is why you do this stuff. And, you know, they always show a tape of a kicker, like, sitting on the sidelines cutting his toenails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the lonesome kicker. Like so do, do the guys on the Buffalo Bills treat you as a football player, or do they? Uh, yeah, they do, actually. I mean, they really do. I think I, I, I try to stay around in the off season and kind of run with them and lift with them and do all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I think they kind of respect that I'm, I'm not just some... Some guy coming in on fourth down and going home after that. You well, know? one of the things about uh, being a kicker in the NFL, uh, and, and I, I knew this from a friend of ours that we had, uh, Chip Low Miller, from uh, years ago. Oh, that, sure. that the pressure is so different than probably anything else in in sports. It's not even it's not even similar to say I would say a closer in baseball. You. It just, it's such acute pressure. You're there for, for that, that one time, you know, to win or lose a game. And, uh, it, uh I know a lot of different kickers have a, lo a lot of different strategies psychologically to deal with that pressure. How do you handle it when you come into a game, say when a game is on the line? Yeah, I just try to concentrate on what, uh, what I need to concentrate on. Like, just for me, it's staying slow, you know. So I staying just, slow. I just stay slow, stay slow, you know, stay smooth to it. And, and really it's, you know, it might not, to the fans, it might not be a big kick, say, in the second quarter when it's, you know, 10 to 10 or whatever. Right. But to me, I'm a chief. That's my job. So every kick is kind of pressure packed. So when you do finally get into that, uh, you know, that end of the game kind of thing, well, you've already kind of, uh, it's really not much different than a, a normal kick. I mean, yeah, it is, sure, but it's, it's but not, not much. You right. know, do you fans play? look at it like, oh, wow, it's the end of the game, you know, but, Really, you're, you're concentrating on every kick. Do you, do you play Madden? Do you do you play like the other guys, like like the other players? Do you, do you play the Madden game? I play. Uh, well, I'm kind of more of a tech mobile kind of a guy. Okay, all right. To be honest with you, uh, because I was curious if you if you played Madden or NFL Live in those games, if you pick yourself and and if you're a good kicker. I've played against the Bills in uh, in the in in the Madden game. And mm -hmm. you're a very erratic kicker, depending on whatever Madden's mood is. Sometimes yeah, I'm playing yeah, against I, the Bills, and I, they'll say, like, <laughs> it's a 57-yard field goal, and, and it'll go, he's good. And, of course, the Madden thing is just a computer chip, but he'll go, like, he's got four or five catchphrases, like, this kicker can do it from anywhere on the field. <laughs> then the next time the Bills get the ball, they come down the field, they get to the 30, they stall out, and you kick a field goal, and it bounces off the upright. Right. Then Madden oh. turns on you, and Madden <laughs> says, "That's unexcusable for a kicker to miss a field goal from this close." That sounds like a fan sometimes. I I just think it would be cool to to be playing the video game and have yourself. No, it is, yeah, it is. It really is. But I uh, but I, I usually try to run myself. You know, try to do a fake. 
and move everybody off the field because I'm so <laughs> slow on that game. But I, you know, I get about four yards before they finally come back from the sideline and tackle me. What is your, what's your longest kick, Brian? Uh, 54. Ooh. A couple 50, years ago. Wow. 54. Years ago. Is, is that home or away? That was, that was an away game. Well, it was Seattle down in San Diego. Gotcha. All right, and uh, enough about you. Let's talk about us for a second. Uh, we're on uh, WBUF in Buffalo. Have you ever heard our show? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So are there any guy? Uh, do you know of any other football players that might listen to this show, or are you it? Uh, I mean, has, has the show ever I'm come? Sure a lot of them do. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty popular station. I mean, even when you guys aren't on, and it's uh, you know, it's a, hold on, it's a pretty popular station when, when you guys aren't on. on. No, even yeah, when no, we're not. No, 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 no. I got, I got as well as when you're on. Oh. I, no, I got, <laughs> I got what he was saying. It's a lot of memories, you know. It's a lot of. I got what he was saying. So listen, just pass along good thoughts to Buffalo Bills. I was telling uh, Mike the other day, uh, Willis McGahey. I am, an, I'm fascinated. With this guy, even thinking about drafting a high fantasy pick on him, how has he been looking? <laughs> he's, been, he's been doing great. Man. He came in in great shape. I mean, he's a he's got he's a specimen. I mean, he's a he's a big kid. And he's not and it's not fat, you know. And he's fat. I mean, I to be honest with you, though, I don't watch the films and I don't do a lot with the offense and and uh, I mean, they all look great, but he's he certainly stands out, you know. All right, dude, and listen, so uh, that coach that you had last year, are you glad he's gone? I, we, you know, I know you don't like bad mouthing a coach after he leaves, and you probably had limited contact with him. But it seems a lot of guys in Buffalo, when this guy Greg Williams left, as soon as the coach leaves, all the players say, "Hey, the reason that we sucked was that the coach like didn't give us good plays." <laughs> right. So now you yeah. got you got another guy. Now you like this guy better than the other guy? Uh, well, I get I do now. I guess I mean yeah, I do he's now. The guy that's now, question, you know. Man. But I I did like Greg. I mean, he was always very positive to me. That's really kind of something I look at. I don't. Obviously, the plays they call don't really matter to me much, you know, other, other than get, kick more field goals or such. But, uh, you know, I, Greg was always positive, and Mike, the uh, new guy, Malarkey, is very positive. Are you, are you a married guy? Uh, well, you, yeah, you married with no kids. Married with kids. Well, then let me ask you, from the single from the single player standpoint in Buffalo, where the Bills are, you know, no offense to your hockey team, I mean, the, the Buffalo Bills are Buffalo. Uh, yeah. i gotta, I got to think guys could... You get laid all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were on the Buffalo <laughs> Bills. Do, uh, I, I'm sure they can. Are you sure they uh, can? Uh, yeah, would you I, know? I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't hear. I don't. Uh, I don't hear too many stories though. They, no. they do. They kind of keep it to themselves oh. or, or keep it away from me anyway. Absolutely. Okay. And I think under penalty of death, if he revealed any of those stories, yes. uh, and he is the <laughs> kicker. I mean, the, the long and short of it, he is the kicker. He would be killed. Your training yeah. camp. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> are, are the Bills training at a college, or are you one of those teams that trains at a hotel somewhere? Where are you guys at? We're at uh, <laughs> at St. John's Fisher College in Rochester, New York. How oh, bad my. does How bad does that suck? Uh, well, it, it's not too bad. Everything's within uh, walking distance. I've been in other camps where you had to ride a bike everywhere, get in a golf cart or something. And I would say, around. from my experience talking to guys at training camp, uh, you know that also uh, you have different perspectives on that when you're uh, single and married, also. Yeah, well, and I, I think know, marriage is marriage, and some of these uh, married guys, you know, when training camp comes, it's a uh, you know, a little getaway. Yeah, but you know what? There are there, <laughs> are, there, are, there are some teams where there are coaches that let their players, the veteran players, go home right during training camp. You know, I, I mean, now that's that's a choice I'd offer you, Ryan. How, first of all, I've been married; on, it'll be twenty three years on Saturday, mm -hmm. so I can say uh, I love my wife more than anything, but. For me, the greatest thing is when I get to spend some time without her. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't. Now I know training camp stinks, but if your coach said to you, "You can either stay at training camp or go home to your wife every night," and uh, she might be listening now, but please tell us the truth. How long have you been married, Ryan? Uh, three years. Three mm -hmm. years now. Would almost you, a newlywed. Here. Would you Would you go home every night if if you could if the Bills trained close to the Buffalo area? You know, I guess I would, and, and no, she's not listening. But I, I, you would, yeah, just yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I would. Yes, you, I would. All right, good answer. You're a little that's undecided, fair. though. That's that's. Um, how's your wife like the fact that you're the kicker? I mean, uh, not... well, she likes the fact that I'm playing. Mm -hmm. She likes you know? the fact that you she play. Likes the, yeah, she likes all that, all that, uh, all the getting the paychecks and all that. Uh, but she. 
she gets nervous right along with me. You know, I, mean, I, I can only imagine what it's like to sit in the stands and not have any control over it. Well, you know, but was... the, uh, of course, they can drink in, in Buffalo in the stadium. They couldn't in Seattle. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, well, at Husky Stadium, anyway, when we first played there, our first couple of years. So, All right, hold on again. She brings the, she uh, puts a couple down and then it's, then it's, it's, it's <laughs> that's great. You actually you actually have a couple of people who would like to ask you questions. Uh, just keep okay. for one one more second, uh, Ryan. Here's uh, Tom. Tom. Hey Ryan. Uh, hey Don. Mike. What's happening? Hey. Hey. Hey Ryan. Two two questions. Do you ever have a weird injury? You know, like where you hit yourself in a foot with an axe or anything like that? Like other. <laughs> <laughs> that's that one guy in Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was went to the Pro Bowl the year before. And my other, uh, I guess my other question is, uh, sorry, my other question, a fantasy thing. If I had to come down to the wire, I have to get you or uh, Neil Rackers. Who am I going with? Well, you know, that's an excellent question. <laughs> that's you. an excellent question. Would you, <laughs> well, would, Ryan, myself, Ryan, would you, now, with all due respect to Neil. Okay. Let's say that, uh, uh, gosh, I don't know who would be, uh, Vander Jack would probably be the top fantasy kicker. Uh, based on his stats and the number of times that Indianapolis gets down there. So let's say that it's like the third round, and I got a choice for you or uh, Grammatica from Tampa Bay, or I got a choice of you or, uh, God, who's another guy who's just steady and, and never never misses? Um, why are you looking at me like that? Like, uh, Stover, Baltimore. Yeah, good yeah, Sto Matt good. Stover's good. Would you would you pick yourself above above Matt Stover or or above uh, the the guy one of the uh, brothers down in uh, Tampa Bay? Would I? Oh, well, I would. Yeah. Are you in your but, mind? I mean, that's kind of my own uh, personal confidence, I for, guess, for myself. So, I think... for all of the fantasy football players, listening... it'd be kind of stupid if he answered that question by saying, you know, no, I'd go with the other guy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got a better percentage. I, I and I think he's well, got I more thought, confidence. I thought maybe he would answer no, with a stupid I don't think answer. So. I don't think any athlete would answer that question. Would that you way. take your? What's the highest round you would take yourself in? <laughs> most most kickers go with like. There's a run on him in the ninth or tenth round in fantasy leagues. Would you spend a third round pick on yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Go on the first it's round. Very easy question. <laughs> so, in, yeah, well, in, I mean, it depends on how many points I score. You. Yeah. I don't uh -huh. do the fantasy football, but I do the baseball, so it's kind of. There you go. Uh, you know, it kind of depends on what kind of player they are. You know, it's, you, it's just kind of apples and oranges kind of a thing, I guess. Do you think the Red Sox have any chance at all of catching the Yankees? No, no, yeah. you don't. Me and neither. If, and if there was a, if, if if you knew a guy who did a radio show named Mike O'Mara and he had made a bet and even added two games on, meaning that now I, I think today the Red Sox are, are what it's a, nine games back. Nine games back. I took the Red Sox to finish two games in front of the Yankees. So now they're eleven games back. Uh, would you concede the bet at this point, or would you wait for the Red Sox to be mathematically eliminated? Yeah, well, yeah, I'd probably bargain. I plea bargain it. I plea bargain. Plea, plea bargain. All right. Well, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. Damn it. All right, Ryan. Yeah. Listen. Thank you for your time. We'd love to have you on uh, during the season. Yeah. Especially, yeah you bet. especially after you either yeah, make or don't make a kick. And know this: being, <laughs> being a Buffalo Bills kicker, I was uh, I was just going to mention this in the new sporting news. They've got this ridiculous nerd quiz, this dumb sports quiz. So I'm going through thinking that these are impossible questions. I'm just trying to answer the football questions. Right. But to show you the significance of being a field goal kicker, especially in Buffalo, when it came to the question that was, in Super Bowl 25, whatever it was, blank missed a field goal that would have won the game for blank against blank. Right away, I knew. Scott Norwood, yeah. Buffalo Bills, New, New York, York Giants. Giants. Right. Right. Knew it right away. Unfortunately, like it or don't like it, that's the legacy of the Bills. That's mm -hmm. unfortunate right for kickers, too. That's the life they lead. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. now. And, then you uh, look at Vinatieri. I guess it kind of works both ways. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the way the game works. And uh, you know, Easter famine. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough. I mean, mental toughness. You know, you guys might chill out on the sidelines in training camp, you know, and like drink my ties while the rest of the guys are, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, having heat stroke. But the yeah, fact you is, you got to come right down and, and do it when it when the time when it's on the line. Yeah, you know, Van, Vinatieri is another guy I might have to take before I took you. I'm taking him based on this, uh, the fact that he came on the show cold. and he let us disguise his voice. I'm taking him as my fantasy kicker. Really I'm him. absolutely <laughs> taking him. That's my criteria. In what confidence. round? What round will you take him? I will take him, uh, you know, in the normal progression of the fantasy draft. When it's kicker time, I will take him. I'll all right, yeah, for the sake of this conversation, yeah, first round. First round. Mm -hmm. pick. He'll well, be my first right pick. Well, I appreciate right. that. All right, Brian, man. hey, great talking to you. Have a great season. When is your guys' first game? Uh, 
uh, you're you first, know, I don't even He's know. the kicker. He doesn't have to worry. He just gets on the bus. No, he'll be Pract- there. Your practice game, I think, is a week from this weekend. That's the first uh, play game. All right, Ryan. Yeah, that's the first preseason game. Thanks for being on the show. Have a great season. Don't hurt yourself. You bet. Okay. Take care, guys. Thanks, Bye-bye. Ryan. Here he is. Uh, Ryan Lindell from the Buffalo Bills. That's the NFL player that no one could name. There you go. Although, if you guys would have just been a little more on the ball, you did get to special teams, mm-hmm. AFC East. I think we. I think if we had stuck with it, we would have gotten it in, in 80 or 90 more questions. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's go to... Let's, and look at all the people with questions. Yeah. Sure. Now, I just got to know, Nick... That's the what, WBUF, probably. Uh, Nick, no, I don't think area code 802 is, is Buffalo. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Nick, where are you calling from? What I'm city? Burlington, Vermont. Burlington, Vermont. Mm-hmm. What did you want to ask that guy? I really wanted to ask him, just any Buffalo Bill, if they ever thought they were going to get away with beating the Pats in the beginning of last season. <laughs> what's that? Oh, uh, are you talking... They, they were one of, and also it was the Redskins, you know, Redskins or whatnot, were one of the only two uh, hold on. teams that beat them. Whatever it is you were saying, you just got disqualified because you said what, what not. not. What not. What not. I, I vaguely remember that last year in the first game of the year, uh, was it Buffalo just got some guy from New England and Buffalo kicked ass last year and, and killed the Patriots in the first game and then the Patriots came back to win the Super Bowl? I think that's exactly right? what it was. Yeah, they had a great start. How is it in that whole call the only word I understood was what not? What not? <laughs> uh, let's go to Buzz. Stay tuned for news oh, and comments no. coming up no, no, on wrong. the Don and Mike Show. Wrong. In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, one man found a way there to bring is. good news to his people. Me, he made it up. All right, Buzzito, what is the lead story on the news and comments today? Today, why the latest terror alert may be a crock. Yep. Okay. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. <laughs> Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. All right, Buzz's news is next. That was very professional. Veteran Buzz Burbank. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Hey, hold on a second. Hey, give me one more shot of that. Yeah, that was my fault. Uh, uh, the Don and Mike show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike show. Right. Zero tolerance for stupidity. Yeah, yeah. The Don and Mike show. Right, we're Buzz's news brought to you by Smoke Break. This is good smoke. Smokers break the nasty habit without gaining weight. Smoke break. Revolutionary talent for smokers. Get it now at all retailers. Uh, tomorrow on the show, the secret sound is worth one thousand three hundred dollars. Wow, we're getting close. Ooh. Common everyday sound worth over a thousand dollars tomorrow. Uh, please tonight uh, to be watching Trading Spouses on Fox at eight seven central mm-hmm. uh, to see the mommy that we had on yesterday, the one that we had the fight with, mm-hmm. the one that, who ended up complaining to Fox so much that. Uh, a producer, a guy named Tyler Ramsey, mm-hmm. will be on our show tomorrow wow. to talk about how Trading Spouses is looking for more mommies. Yeah, they like us at Fox. <laughs> they think that they can, they can find some mommies on, on this show. They like the controversy. And also tomorrow, I, even though it's not the type of show that we do anymore, I would just want you to know we are going to have a pornographer on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Edgy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Well, here in Washington, cops are working extra hours and carrying automatic weapons around the Capitol. There are over a dozen security checkpoints. And a street that connects two of the Senate office buildings has been shut down until further notice. In New York, traffic is snarled by security checkpoints. Some people took oxygen masks to work with them yesterday after kissing their loved ones goodbye in case it was for the last time. Are you retarded? Grocery stores in Manhattan cannot get deliveries on time because of a renewed fear of trucks. Are you retarded? And today we find out it may be for nothing. Ah! T- turns out Are you retarded? the latest terror alert described by Bush's Homeland Security Chief as sobering news yes. is based on information that's three or four years old. Are you retarded? And there's wow. no evidence that an attack on our financial icons is even planned at this point. Now, see, now you're giving me more information than even I thought I could discern this morning. Right. Tom Ridge came on TV. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is I, I had some stuff to do today, but he left like uh, he was at nine twenty, right. maybe nine twenty, nine okay. thirty. And one of the very first things he said was he was addressing this. Mm-hmm. He said the information is not exactly current. It goes back to January. Yes, he says yeah. Al-Qaeda has updated this information as recently as January. So, so he, he it's really only seven months old. Right, so he led me to believe. Uh, but, but see, there's a difference, though. Yeah. 
I could have bought the seven-month thing, but uh -huh. now you're saying that maybe it's three years the, old? The original information, they say Al-Qaeda has updated it, uh, they, they think around January, which would make the information, the original information, and three and four years old, the latest information, seven months old. And that's what they do, apparently, the way I read it, is that uh, they, they do an update like they've done in previous, uh, with the right. previous attack. Right. They did another recon, but... Uh, but it is seven months old, but the original information goes back two, three years. And the shape of Al-Qaeda has changed considerably, you know, in the time that's passed over the last three or so four as, years. So as we were discussing yesterday then, uh, you, know, we, you know, whether or not to take on, it seriously. Knock on for Mike, uh, right. God forbid. Right. We all got worked up. We all got our panties uh, in the crack of our mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. for... We don't know. That's we don't the, know. That's, that's the big question mark. <laughs> But today, once the reports came out that the information, the original information, was three or four years old, Tom Ridge said we should still take it seriously. That's the word from the White House. With the Bush administration standing by its latest warning, even though it admits the intelligence is old news. And I'd like to point out that three or four years ago, Brian Dunkelman was on American Idol. I mean, at this point, <laughs> should we still take him seriously? Yes. yes. Or, yes. As, or as seriously as we take Ryan Seacrest? I always do. He updated himself in January. <laughs> Just as the president continues to stand by his invasion of Iraq, which he says he'd do again today, even knowing what he now knows. Okay, wow. now everybody, hold on. Let me just get real political on your ass for one second. Okay. Why am I voting for John Kerry? Mm -hmm. What Buzz has just said. That the president would do it again today. I voted for Bush last time. If, if the guy would just come out... You know, the, the problem is, this is a bad war that we're in. <laughs> what, I, what I want is a little spin from him, a little, hey, you know, we would handle it differently. Uh, instead, he steadfastly, and he has done this since day one. Right. I, right. I did it before, I would do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you lost my vote, dumbass. You know, I mean, there, there's one side that, that, that handles it a certain way, and another side that says maybe if we spent some time and energy, you know, trying to shore up some alliances around the world, mm -hmm. that, that, that this might indeed move to a safer but spot. At the same time, you do hunt down these these terrorists. You do fight these terrorists right. on every front that you can. You beef up the intelligence. Right. But I get freaked out. When you know when there is an ad admission in any way, shape, or form that there, that there was anything wrong with here's that. the thing with him, <laughs> with he Bush. can't though he can't, and his advisors can't. They, they yeah. tell him he can't do that. Listen, you know I had to learn it the hard way. Learn some humility, dude. Learn some humility. I mean, there are no weapons of mass destruction over there. There were none. Humility, what? wrong hombre. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, Sorry, I, I mean it ain't gonna happen I with this guy. I understand, right. but what he does is. He goes the opposite way. He does, yeah. right. Yeah. Instead of like being humble and saying, hey, you know, I'm very sorry. We got, however you would say it, we got into the saying it was a mess. Instead of that, or even trying to half-ass do a spin, he digs his heels mm -hmm. in and says, yeah, knowing that the reason that we went there was wrong, I would do it again. Yeah. And that plays very well with a lot of people that, you know, hey, where the attitude is blow the whole world up. If you disagree with us, blow you up. You know, I mean, right. that really, I mean, that's yeah. the way I feel now. So I have one question for George Bush. Are you retarded? <laughs> Insane. <laughs> would, would you just, are you retarded? <laughs> give me some coffee and answer the question. Are you retarded? George, give me some coffee. In saying what he said, Mr. Bush was responding to criticism from John Kerry, who says the president's policies have encouraged terrorism and increased hatred of the United States. The president says his policies were adopted because we were already a target for terrorism. And he says the world's better off without Saddam Hussein. Kerry says he doesn't buy Democrat Howard Dean's claim that Bush stepped up the terror level alert for political reasons. Oh, and, uh, would all of the, the people who have my email address, and there's not many, but there are some out there, mm -hmm. some friends of mine, some in the business, some out of the business. Would you stop sending me the, it, it's not spam, but stop sending me the conspiracy theory stuff that says we've already got bin Laden and that on October 28th or October 29th, Bush is going to pull him out and we're going to say, look, we got him and that that's yeah, going to win, win the election. I mean, I must have gotten when when we discuss politics like we did yesterday and like it or not, we, we have our own opinions, strong opinions. People that I know, you know, friends of mine, they mm -hmm. write me stuff, and they think they're being helpful. It's like, don't send me this. You'll be thanking them on October 30th. <laughs> it's, it's like what I had to say to my mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, you know, I love you. Mm -hmm. You're fantastic. Yeah. But if you send me one more page of Polog jokes, <laughs> really, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my email address. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah.
It's certainly shaping up to be one hell of a political year. You people are driving the pollsters crazy. Just this week, there have been polls showing Bush leading Kerry, Kerry leading Bush, and Bush and Kerry precisely tied. The bottom line is, they are tied statistically. You could argue that the election's still three months away, but you could also argue that most voters made up their minds on this election a long time ago. And there's still the Teresa Hines Carey factor to consider. Golly. She, she was introducing her husband at a rally yesterday when a Bush man with a megaphone shouted, Four more years! Four more years of hell, she responded. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa pointed out that smart people admit their mistakes and correct them. <laughs> Hello, she said, and then she shouted, Three more months! <laughs> All right! I'm starting to like her more and more. Right after the seventh thing, I'm starting to like her more and more. About her. Here's yeah. the, here's yeah, the thing. thing. You know, say what you will. Just uh, the accent bonus. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. The accent yeah, bonus. Yeah, she could be the first up. lady of the United States, right. maybe. And you go, oh, darling, what are we going to do? I don't want to pay for the manicure, darling. Shop it. <laughs> what if we could get her to drop the fake accent? <laughs> <laughs> Winner. Be, wouldn't it be great? Winner. <laughs> wouldn't it be great if that was his campaign strategy? Yeah. Yeah. They pull her out at the end, like, of the last four days. and she goes, She's from Boise, Idaho. <laughs> drop the accent, honey. Here we go. Hello. How are you? She's <laughs> dropping the accent October 29th. Right. I, you know, and I think right. It has been Yes. brought out. So you're saying you don't like the accent, also probably the idea of uh, these women should all be st from Stepford. Yes. <laughs> Every first person should be from Stepford. Correct. Republican Arnold Schwarzenegger, meanwhile, is handling the tough issues like a company using his likeness on a bobblehead doll. I say to everyone here today and to all Californians, yes, my oath and you. Yeah, Arnold. Ar Arnold sued the Ohio Discount Merchandise Company for using his likeness without permission or profit. Aye. But he settled out of court yesterday, provided the company get rid of the doll's gun and give its profits to charity. Arnold's charity, an after-school program to keep kids out of trouble. Um, and hold on a second. I got. I did. Was not able to get to this earlier in, in the segment that I call stupid news. There's you, more Arnold news. Today. This is great Arnold stuff. <laughs> Um, Arnold, and this is not from a tabloid. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is still smarting from the fist of his father. Ooh. Whoa. Gustav Schwarzenegger. Poor Gustav! Boy. A former member of the Nazi party. Mm hmm The California governor says the discipline... Are you getting the music right? <laughs> you know, I, I don't even have to turn around. It's right, like, you know. Like Radar O'Reilly. You just know. You really are. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger says the discipline he received... Would now be called child abuse. Yeah, boy. He tells Fortune magazine, and Mike, you can translate here as we're going along. All right. My hair was pulled. My hair was pulled. I was hit with belts. I was hit with belts. So was the kid next door. So was the kid next door. Many of the children I've seen were broken by their parents. Many of the children were broken by their parents. Which was the German Aust Austrian mentality. That was the German Austrian mentality. And I say, blank my old and blank you. I says, Dad, Gustav Schwarzenegger. Gustav. Please. It'll be Gustav Schwarzenegger. <laughs> There's my dad. Hello, Arnold. This is your dad. Oh. Gustav Schwarzenegger. Arnold, Arnold, run to your bedroom. Gustav is home. I'm going to hit you with belt and pull your hair. I say that's the way it was. It was normal. <laughs> that's why I wanted to get my body built up yes. and then run for governor, though. How great is he? Uh, and how great, great is it that you're seeing now in regular news stories? I don't know yeah. if we got this from MSNBC. Regular basis. Mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger still smarting at the fist of his father, Gustav, a former member of the Nazi party. Gustav, why is he in the headlines again? And what about that bobblehead? <laughs> oh, he's giving. <laughs> oh, be careful what you say about Michael Jackson. His little sister may try to beat you up. Super Bowl Janet had to be held back by security guards at a nightclub in Los Angeles last week after she tried to punch a man who said something rude about Michael. And this you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. Every he's day. A, should not say he's jackal. jackal. I'm not a jackal. The man... The man so, go ahead. Honey. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm just so happy that happened because <laughs> she's a better fighter than me. She's okay, Jacko. I don't want to be called Jackal. Jackal. Hey, Michael, have you ever met Gustav Schwarzenegger? Oh, yes, he's a former member of the Nazi party. <laughs> well, the man called Jacko a bleeping freak 
Uh, big burly bouncers carried the man out of the club, and Janet went back to dancing. But quoting a witness, it definitely ruined her night. Mm -hmm. And this you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. Janko. He's a. Should not say he's Jacko. Janko. I'm not a Jacko. Janko. VH wants making a movie about Michael from Motown to the molestation mess. All we care about is how it ends. It ends with Michael pleading innocent and then dancing on an SUV. Let's have uh, Gustav over to meet Mr. Beck. <laughs> Near a Jackson in doubt, you dance. Buzz, time for a break. We'll come back with another full segment of news and comments. What's the next story? Another shock jock throws in the towel. Yeah, all right, baby. <laughs> They're dropping like flies, man. Woo! Gotta do what we do. You gotta take it back a notch. Woo! Come on now. Come on, everybody. <laughs> come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. How you doing out there? Hey, Cindy Lopper, are you listening right now? You thought we were a hot AC Top 40 show earlier today. <laughs> How are you? How are you anyway? <laughs> Shock, jock, Jerry Todd. <laughs> um, actually, Buzz, yes? if I'm not mistaken, aren't there like four or five dumb DJ stories coming up? Uh, we have a couple, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. so yeah. Uh, stay tuned. Shannon in the morning. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Now in their 20th season, it's the Don and Mike Show. Incidentally, I uh, just out in Cancer Corner with uh, Buzz mm -hmm. and Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe said, I'm, I'm sure it's an exaggeration. Yeah. Our, our show is popular. But Joe said, when we had Ryan Lindell from the Buffalo Bills on, when I was just spouting out football stuff, right. I guess I had said, you know, how could they possibly guess Warren Sapp? Mm -hmm. uh, and Warren Sapp, John Lynch, not in Tampa anymore. I guess I said Warren Sapp was in Tampa Bay. Of course, mm -hmm. I know he's with the Oakland Raiders. But apparently, and, and I apologize to all of the guys in the basement of the science building. When did he go to the Raiders? Last year? Uh, just this offseason. Mm -hmm. This offseason. Okay, and right, uh, anyway, Joe said, and Buzz heard him outside, yes. 100,000 people have 100, called. 100,000. And are still wow. calling to, to tell me, you know, yet of another one of my huge, gigantic, elephant-sized mistakes. Warren Sapp in the AFC <laughs> West, though, now. Yes. Yeah, very true. So technically, you're really not in error. Well, I think I said, though, everybody knows that Warren Sapp is with Tampa Bay. Yeah. I think I may have yeah. said that. But, hey, listen, I know he's with the Raiders. Really, I do. Trust me. We know I watch the freaking NFL channel. Okay? <laughs> and I'll tell you something very, very sad. What's that? I have already gone through a mock draft. It's I swear on my child's life, I have gone through a mock draft. August 3rd. You you are into it this year. <laughs> You're into it this year maybe more than you've ever been into it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You and missed I'm, it, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes. yes, I have. You bet your ass I missed it. But I will point to one man. Yeah? This man in the studio over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Buzz, right. Yeah. Mock drafts, it, you know, it all comes down to D.L. Dumb luck. Absolutely. Right. I, I mock the drafts. <laughs> Hi, Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. A shock jock in Chicago has thrown in the towel. Eric Mankow Muller was suing a listener. Suing a listener who's filed 70 FCC complaints against him. Mankow said the man's complaints were malicious, untrue, repetitive, and were filed only to harass the radio guy and cause him financial ruin. That's right. This is Mankow. <laughs> and this man has sued me so many times. I am suing him. Woo! Not anymore, though. Now... Oh, hold on. I'll give it to you, too, Mike. Here you go. Woo! <laughs> but now, Mancow's dropped the lawsuit. There's no point in winning, much less continuing the lawsuit. Turn it off for him. The listener is uh, David Smith, who represents Citizens for Community Values of Illinois. David Smith, this is Mancow. I'm suing your ass. There you go, ma'am. We're going to fight, fight, fight. Well, he's dropped the suit, but Mancow says he wins because he made his point. The listener says he wins because Mancow cleaned up his show. But when free speech loses, nobody wins. My question is, what kind of disc jockey sues a listener, even if the listener's so retarded... Are you retarded? ...that they sent a complaint about you to the FCC? It's not supposed to work that way. <laughs> no! Are you retarded? Are you retarded? It's because of the atmosphere. Even stations that play Broadway show tunes are feeling the FCC pinch. A nationally syndicated show called Broadway's Biggest Hits 
this week avoided airing a satirical song from the Pulitzer Prize winning musical A Chorus Line. Oh my God. The song was replaced with a G rated song from the not so prize winning Bye Bye Birdie. Hi and welcome to Broadway FM. Well, I'm sorry today we're not going to be able to play a selection because of the FCC. However, we have something beautiful for you from another show. Now, A Chorus Line is one of my favorite move movies that was made out of a Broadway musical, and it's just super. We won't be playing it today. Because <laughs> we're not shock jocks. So not like all the smut peddlers. Shock jocks. Quoting the producer who had to censor his own program, it just makes me want to vomit. Oh. Hey, vomit. <laughs> How you doing, shock jocks? Vomit. Woo. Vomit. <laughs> <laughs> In Buffalo. A woman has been arrested on prostitution charges after giving out her phone number on a local radio show. 29-year-old Melissa Bloomberg, or Pussycat, as she's known to her clients, appeared on the show as a professional escort. An off-duty cop heard the show and the call of duty. He says she answered the door in a red teddy. Pussycat, pussycat, I, I love you. Yes, I do. It's shock radio. We've got a prostitute on the phone. <laughs> and we're going to have the police raid her house later. Crazy. Woo. Wow, you're famous. Vomit. <laughs> vomit, vomit, vomit. <laughs> shock radio. <laughs> you're famous, said the cop when the lady came to the door in her red teddy. To which she added, I've been famous since I've been on the radio. I've been getting a lot of calls. <laughs> and who says home confinement isn't a great punishment in Indianapolis? A man on home detention still somehow managed to lure several people to his home and convince them that as part of a radio contest... They needed to take off all their clothing to try to win fifty thousand dollars. How you doing? I'm some guy at home. I know you're wondering how I have this reverb. Don't worry about it. Come on over to my house and take all your clothes off. If you want to win the fifty thousand dollars, you better drop trowel right now in front of me. And I hope when you get naked that I don't vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Once nude, the contestants were told to put on clothing that was too small for them. Forty-year-old. That's a crazy idea. Richard Brown is accused of impersonating a local morning show and of violating the terms of his punishment. Hey, what has Brown done for you lately? Invest Did you? <laughs> Shock radio vomit. Invest vomit, vomit. I'm going to sue you, man cow. Woo! Investigators say no one was injured, but, quote, there has been some emotional trauma. Are we done with the DJ stories now, Buzz? One more. Okay. Some DJs in Little Rock, Arkansas, went on trial yesterday on pornography charges after they handed out adult videos at a recent gay pride parade. No word on the sexual orientation of the DJs, but the video was gay. Hey, and homo, the DJ some homo video? <laughs> Got some... Video. Got some homo video. That's right. Headed out of the gay pride parade. Having out a great video. I don't want to offend any of you homos, but when I watch this homo video, I feel like I want to vomit. Are you gay anyway? And the DJ was wearing a Speedo at the time. <laughs> but theirs wasn't the only mischief that day. As a protest against the gays, 35-year-old Wesley Bono dumped a load of manure at the start of the parade route in Little Rock. He unloaded the 6,000 pounds of natural fertilizer in front of the home of a gay couple. Oh, damn. Quoting him, they stirred up enough. I figured they needed the smell to go with it. Sadly, a lot of church-going straight people had to walk through the manure that Sunday morning. Wesley says it wasn't a crime, hate crime or otherwise. He says he was just exercising his free speech. We'll see. He's in court today. It was a crap crime. Tell you what, see that. Maybe you want to vomit. <laughs> In sports, Atlanta quarterback Michael Vick says he's growing an afro, and he says he'll keep growing it no matter how big it gets until he wins the Super Bowl. He says he... I want to tell you something. I'm going to be a one hell of a big afro. <laughs> he I him... thought you picked them to win this year. I did, but it's going to be Mike and I'm still going to be a giant afro because it am still a long, long season. <laughs> says he gave himself bad luck last year by getting a haircut. He was injured shortly after that. I love afros. Yeah, yeah I do right. too. I'm Hold glad. On. Speaking of afros... His first message is... Hey, uh, Rob, uh, Robert DeMille, man. You should grow one. You have a skit for me, but that's the side of the point. I got a picture of you in the flower. We have a skit for you. Yeah, come on by with your big afro. Oh, Robert, you know, I'd Robert love to the... see Robert the Angry Mail Man grow an afro. So would I. And Rod... Oh, yeah. Roger Clemens was ejected from a youth game over the weekend after spitting a sunflower seed at an umpire. It happened in Colorado after Clemens' son was called out in a close play. Hump! 
<laughs> and finally, not since the Blair Witch Project or those fish that walk on land and bite humans have Marylanders been so concerned with a creature out oh, there. Well, now listen, I, I know we're running late on time, but I, I do monitor the Baltimore media good, outlets. So I'm good. close enough to get them. And like on Channel 13... And Don't I'm, diminish this! On Channel 2 in Baltimore, <laughs> this has been the story. Don't We're diminish out, this, Don! There's a creature... Out there. Hi, everybody, it's Marty Bass, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Well, <laughs> this morning, there's a creature, there's a fox, there's a hybrid out Is there. Is it a hyena? Is it a dog? Which one it is? I'm He's telling old. you, this has been the lead story in Big Baltimore. News in You've Maryland. seen the video of it, right? Yeah. But I've seen over there. But a weird, weird creature. There was video. Other people, over there. people caught glimpses. <laughs> people caught glimpses of it of this animal that appeared to be part coyote, part hyena, or hyote, as they called it. Hyote. Turns, hyote. Turns out there's more than one, and one of the creatures has now been captured. And it's not a hyena or a coyote or any satanic mixture of the two. It's a fox. A fox with mange. A mangy fox. <laughs> okay. Animal officials say they will catch the fox's mother, too, and treat them both for mange and then set them free. Oh, okay. out there. Yeah, what a disappointment. I'm Buzz Burbank right. on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. Oh, oh that's it. Oh. Good night, everybody. Mangy fox. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. This reminder. Tomorrow's Secret Sound, $1,300. Our thanks today to Cindy Lauper. Yes, she was yeah. wonderful. See her in concert. If she's coming to your city where we broadcast. Also, thanks to Ryan Lindell from the NFL Buffalo Bills tomorrow. Oh, and don't forget, watch Trading Spouses tonight so we can rag on the mom that we had on yesterday. Yeah. Tomorrow, one of the producers from this show is there looking for mommies for Trading Spouses on Fox. Plus, something to do with some pornographer. <laughs> oh, for what it is. It'll make you vomit. There it is again. There you, I, there you go. Good day to you, Good sir. Day to you, Good sir. day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Please stay tuned. For Ron and Fev, simply the finest night's time radio show in America. Coming up in Baltimore, Tampa Bay, right here in Washington, D.C. Enjoy it, everybody. They won't make you vomit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We got to go. Yeah. Is Maine's worse than syphilis? <laughs> I don't know. Which tastes worse? Oh, I think it's equal. You. Anyway, have a nice night. Enjoy your natty bow. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but I don't care. Till we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs>